All right, welcome to episode seven of Barovia Beckons, our Curse of Strahd interactive D&D charity stream where you can affect the game and help the kids of Dell Children's Hospital in Austin, Texas by donating. Uh, should you feel so inclined, you can even summon Strahd. Uh. <laughs> or we tea. donate, but don't don't summon just like, Strahd. <laughs> we'll just have like a nice meeting, just you know, just dis- to discuss some things, have some tea, mm-hmm. maybe a biscuit. It'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Strahd's a nice guy, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. So last we left off in episode six, uh, you all met uh, a very interesting uh, fellow who invited you to stay at uh, his house rather than the inn that is infested with cockroaches, mm. um, <laughs> as Ivan <laughs> found out. Um, after you get back from your uh, daily uh, exploration and helping of the town of Kresik. So you had gotten your horses and were getting ready to leave Kresik is where we left off. So we're going to go ahead and pick up right there where we left off. Uh, Everyone has kind of woken up for the day and done their morning routines um, and met at the stables where the horses are at. And the horses are standing there. There's four of them. um, Everybody gets a horse. Exactly like you remember them from the caravan that took off in the mist. Not dead. Not dead. (laughs) (laughs) Zombie horses. Got ah. it. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised in this kind of place anyways. <laughs> no, they actually look like they have been very well taken care of. Oh, they have been brushed. Their uh, their manes are nicely brushed, and they uh, they look like they have probably gotten a bath. Oh. Uh, they look well fed. And Thank uh, God for other Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, and they're very happy to see you. As you all walk towards the stables, you see him whinny and neigh and kind of stomp their little hooves. <laughs> After all of the shit we put them through, they're happy to see us. Trust they know who we are. We, we didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, what were we thinking of doing? Are we going to go look for that thing by the lake, or what were we going to do? So, for Scare us clothes. to have, yeah, for us to have sleepy time in the village we have to go deal with scarecrows map that's right that's right and we need a map which he will give us a copy of if we take care of the scarecrows copy yes copy echo (laughs) (laughs) yep that's what's happening right now right okay bring back bring Apparently, Echo.exe is taking a little bit longer to uh, boot up today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It was a long night. <laughs> Bring back sax. Hence? Oh, uh, okay. <clears throat> I, I did not, have did not remember him saying that. <laughs> I have a question. <clears throat> what is um, uh, the scarecrow? What is, is this a person? Does this person come? Oh. Ah, scares in the, the crows and oh. scare crows, scare crows. Oh, um, possession. So, so they scare... possess the crows. No, 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 no. Ivan, let me help you. Um, scare crows are usually in fields and they're like dummies that farmers put up to scare away crows from the crops. Apparently, these dummies in the fields are coming to life. And I guess scaring people. So we have to go deal with that. They're not actually people, but apparently they may be possessed by something. Echo low-key makes the sound of a fire. (laughs) I just look at her like, ooh, girl! (laughs) Get up. Yeah, um, uh, setting scarecrows on fire usually works. But then who would scare the crows? Um, they'd probably make more of them. They just won't be possessed. Well, how do crows. we know that? Well, we don't. We're going to figure out why they're possessed as well. Come on, Megan. It's going to be fun. You get to fight things. 
okay. evil things. Yeah. Evil things. Evil things, not just regular things. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I can help. If we I get will... back tonight, I will arm wrestle you again. Are you really willing to lose that quickly? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> I've been... Well, you left me onto my horse. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> Thank you. The rows are up there. It's not, it's not graceful at all. I'm uh, backwards. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Echo makes a point of picking a horse, tying that horse to someone else's horse, climbing up, sitting cross-legged, pulling out the book, and settling in to work on the book as we're going. Oh, Echo. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> my little book. Nerd. Uh, I will climb onto my own horse. And I guess sit side saddle. My outfit doesn't really go with <laughs> riding a horse normally. I told you it wasn't practical. Uh, you're right. Yeah, we're going to have to pick you up some pants. It's fine. I'm fine. Okay. So. Uh, the we four horses. Barry. <laughs> Barry is still up in the room. It'll be fine. <laughs> the moment I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I knew adopting something, we'd always have to think about a babysitter. We need to, <laughs> need to get rid of Barry. No! Sweet, sweet Barry. He just needs to find a good home, and I have not found one yet. And this place is very unsettling, and I would not feel safe and happy if Barry Kodak was in the woods by himself. What's Especially it? with all the stuff up there, you know? <clears throat> awesome. <clears throat> we should get going. Yeah. <laughs> So the horses are lined up in a uh, parallel row. There's four of them. And Echo climbs up and ties one of the horses. So what is the marching order? Who's taking the lead? I'm in Vex the middle. Can go first. Vex can go first. Okay. Vex is taking the lead. And then uh, Shiloh and then Echo and then Ivan, you're taking up the rear. Okay. I'll follow all the pretty ladies. <laughs> So you take off towards the uh, the front gate, and there's a uh, relatively tall guard that stands about seven foot tall, uh, who starts turning the crank, and you can hear that chuk, 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 as the doors kind of part ways and open up. And as you look back, you can see an owl bear cub peeking out the window of the room that you were staying in. I just yell back and go, we'll be back for you, buddy. You We're never going to get our damage to behave. It's clawing at the window. You can physically <laughs> see the claw marks on the glass. Oh. David, our baby. He's as fine. The, he has roaches to eat. As the doors close back behind you, and you are now outside of the walls of Kresik. <laughs> If we don't do this, we don't get Barry Kodak back. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, okay, okay. We're going to the I'm, south. I'm sure they'll give him back. I'll show back. I'm sure they'll be more than willing to give him back. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Probably. Or <clears throat> what if they hurt him? We'll be back. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, was it south? I think it was south. Yes, yes. south. So we're going to start heading south. Okay. Vex, you're in the lead as the the horses head down the, uh, the road. It kind of curves around and then whips back around itself and heads down towards the uh, the main road that you came from. And as you get to that main road, you realize you can probably head back east. That's where you came from. No, sorry. Directions. West. You came from the west. And the road also travels east. But there is a... Um, it's not a road, but a trail. 
it's probably about five foot wide of just like matted down tall grass uh, that goes to the south past the road. Okay. So you're kind of sitting at that uh, that crossroads. Well, what do you guys think? Which way should we go? Um, heads or tails? They said south. Should we just take down take the matted part? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I'll head down the matted part. Okay. Yeah. So Vex, you snap the reins and the horse heads down towards the. Uh, the edge of the road and as it gets to the threshold where it tries to leave the road and go on to the uh, crushed grass it kind of rears up not to where it throws you up but it kind of rears up and you feel this shiver kind of shake down the horse and it fights a little bit but then steps on to the the matted grass and each horse as it follows behind vex's horse will do the same thing where it kind of bucks up just a little bit just kind of bucks a little bit and then continues down the road. Echo cleared scrambles to get their stuff. That that wasn't normal. You know what, never mind, everything here is not normal. Yep. We should have gotten snacks. We have don't you ha do you not have jerky? No. I have rations. It's not the same. He's got that turkey jerky. <laughs> That unspeakable 15 pounds of turkey jerky. Yeah, don't you have that? Unless oh, no, that's for Barry. Room. Yeah, but unless you left in that room, in which case Barry Kodak is going to be in a food coma when we get back. <laughs> that is the hope. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can I hear anything odd or see anything odd? As your horse is, is trampling across this path, you can hear the hoof prints hitting the grass, and you can hear that dry crackle of the grass underneath its uh, hoofs. And you can hear what sound like birds and wildlife in the brush uh, beyond. Uh, it sounds... Actually, since you've been in this new area, this is probably the most serene and natural area that you've been in. It, it almost feels kind of like home at this point, with with nature kind of surrounding you and it's not sunny but it's bright the clouds kind of cover the sky so you can't see any blue sky but for some reason it seems like there's a lot of natural light in this area the trees are kind of off in the distance on either side and you're just in this trail of a clearing with tall grass on either side the crickets are chirping and in the distance vex about a uh, hundred yards away from your horse at this point you see that the tall grass kind of stops and there's this clearing and you can see another hundred yards after that because it's pretty pretty flat terrain you can see for a long ways on the other side another hundred yards after that first clearing on the left there's a clearing on the right and in these clearings you can see several scarecrows that are spotted across the clearings they have burlap sacks with no face on them. They're all wearing straw hats um, and coveralls, and they're just hanging on those wooden crosses. I'm sorry, you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. My dogs are barking as usual. Um, I have an idea, you guys. Let's put some oil on our arrows and light them on fire, and we can attack the scarecrows from far away. I can also shoot fireball from a hundred and twenty feet away. Oh. Oh, <laughs> uh, but, but, but um, do you mind if I try to investigate one of them first? Go for it. Okay, I, I shall come with you. Okay, I <laughs> will slip off my horse. Copy. Oh, do you want Copy to come with us? Scout. I think oh, Copy first. wants Copy to go. Okay, yeah, do that. I will still slip from my horse. So Echo puts away the book and packs it all up nice and safe and sits on the horse and sends Copy and I'm going to look through Copy's eyes because I am not, it is not lost on me the irony that I have a raven that is going to go fly up on a scarecrow. 
Yeah. How far away is it from us, the closest one? The closest one's about 100 yards away where where you first noticed. 100 yards? Not 100 mm-hmm. feet. 100 yards. Oh, we need to get closer, guys. Uh-huh. <laughs> I climb back up on my horse. <laughs> so, question, question. Yes? Um, If these scaring crows are supposed to be scaring people, why do they leave them? Why not take them down? It doesn't seem like it is very scary right now. It doesn't look scary at all. How is this supposed to keep crows out? You know crows are very smart. They are. They very are very smart. smart. Um, Ivan, I will tell you this. <laughs> I am not a farmer. I don't know how scarecrows work. I will tell you this. That if they send us to kill these things, they definitely will try to attack us. It's just the thing over there. I do not understand how this is supposed to scare people or crows. Um, well, you will. And obviously it's not scaring any crows if there are still crows here. I, this is very bad farming. Uh, Lazy. Joe, do I remember if they had like a time of day when this was happening? Was it like a nighttime thing? Did he tell us that? <laughs> <gasps> they did specify that the issues they were having were generally at night. The scarecrows oh. would come to life at night. Awesome. Okay, Ivan. Uh, so right now they don't look like a problem. Um, the problem is, is at night these things come to life, and I don't know, kill people. I think they kill people. Well, then why don't they take them out during the day? I do not understand. Why do they leave them up? I'm wondering if it has something to do with like big creepy green eyed man that we saw at the caves. I don't want to say his name. This is like Voldemort. Oh, you mean like Strahd? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Harry. When you say that, the trees bend and there's a slight breeze that just through and you can feel like a 10 degree difference in the temperature as it drops as that wind blows across and then the trees come back looks around maybe we should have a code name for this guy Strahd Strahd? the wind blows (laughs) and there's a 10 degree difference (laughs) the power (laughs) Are you guys noticing anything weird? That's weird, right? Every time we say Strahd's name, the wind blows. <laughs> the wind blows. <laughs> and a 10 degree difference as the chill you guys see this? goes down your spine. And, That's uh, weird, right? <laughs> <coughs> oh. um, <laughs> he's got the highest. Uh, Echo, <laughs> you notice in uh, about five feet away from you on the side of this little uh, alcove, there's a uh, bundle. It's a burlap bundle with a ribbon tied around it. And it's a like a it, what catches your attention is the red that pops out because it's a set against all this brown, yellow and green grass. This red ribbon pops out and there's a burlap sack just sitting off to the side of the road. Of course, a shiny thing for Echo. Does it look small enough that I could lift it with Mage Hand? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna send out my- I don't want to get off this horse. I'm gonna send a mage hand and go pick it up and bring it to me. Okay, so your mage hand appears and there's this spectral figure of a skeletal hand that- and picks it up and brings it back to you and it drops it in your uh, lap. And there's a burlap sack, it's probably about the size of a basketball, uh, and it's- it it clinks and clattles like as it uh, settles into your- Lap. It's Christmas for Echo. <laughs> Is there snacks? Open snacks. it. Put the little ribbon. She it pulls goes. the head out. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> As you pull the ribbon, the burlap sack falls, and there's a little note card that says from Filbert. And underneath the note card, there is a health potion for each of you. Thank you for that donation. Oh, Yay! thank you. <laughs> My goodness! Yes. You're teaching us to trust these things, and then one day we're going to pull up one of these things, and it is going to be a severed head, oh, an NPC thinking... that we like. A bag of snakes. I'm okay with that. Snakes, a giant spider. You so. know, fucked up shit. 
So thank you very much, Philbert, for that donation. Uh, thank you for helping the kids at uh, Dell Children's Hospital. I uh, hope you enjoyed that little uh, intervention, and they're going Cute. to need it. Philbert, you're oh, awesome. Good. Thank you. That's 2D4 Is it just... plus 4, right? Yes. Yep. They're 2D4 plus 2. 2d4 plus 2 hit points. Yeah. Where are my notes? Wherever you want and them now to be. I have one because I use my other one. I only have one as well. Okay, so you're sending copy out, and Vex, mm -hmm. you're kind of keeping an eye on, on the general area in the, in the front, right? Yeah, I have my bow and arrow ready. Okay. Um, what is your passive perception? It is... 14. Okay. I should have that written down. Almost as if I can hear Barry. <laughs> <laughs> I miss him already. <laughs> Sometimes we can still hear his voice. <laughs> Not dead yet. Copy flies uh, in and around some of these uh, scarecrows, and they look completely inanimate. Kind of guide uh, Copy around and tell me exactly how Copy is scouting. Because on an initial approach, you don't hear anything uh, through copy, and you certainly don't see anything that sticks out other than they're just scarecrows in a field. With copy, I'm going to, seeing through their eyes once we're close enough, I'm going to send them around uh, to the closest one, do a loop, do a loop, and then land on its arm. Okay. So the uh, they don't have any particular arms. It, the head... Shoulder. Yeah, it's it's got a shoulder yeah. that kind of sticks, and then the mm -hmm. cross comes out from out there. Okay, so yeah. the, oh, so they're like they're like this, yeah. not like this. Yeah, there's the cross, the wooden beam that comes across that sticks mm -hmm. out, and they're just kind of slumped. Yeah, um, so I'm definitely gonna land on the scarecrow, not the cross thing behind it. Okay, so you're landing on the like the actual thing shoulder. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so you land on the shoulder. And Vex, you see Copy fly around, do the circle, and land on the shoulder. And there's a, like, a, a glint of green light. Almost like you've seen this before. You've seen, like, in a dark dungeon, a glint of an emerald in the distance that just catches the light right. And it kind of glints in the distance way south, probably at least half a mile away. Inside the tree line, you catch this glint of green sparkle. Copy the, uh, the scarecrow is completely inanimate as Copy is standing there. Pick at it. Pull at it. <laughs> you pull a, uh, a piece of straw out. Yeah, just... Yep. yep. And just okay, flutter. Um, if we're closer to like one of the second ones, also do like a do do like the next closest one. See if it does anything. After that one, just come back. Okay, you go to the second one, do your loop, and you peck investigate yeah. <laughs> the thing, and it does not react. It's completely inanimate. Did any of you guys see that green light? Scarecrows. No, there was I a green light in the anything. woods. There was Where? a green light in the woods? Yeah, I saw something sparkle when <laughs> Copy landed on the scarecrow. Uh, which way did it come from? Which direction was it, Joe? It was south. Like, you're going south? It was about a half a mile away south. And I'll point that direction. Uh... Can I see it again? Nope, it's just the tree line and darkness. Are these scarecrows actually next to any crops? They're in a field where there were crops. You can see the cut and strewn things of corn. But there's nothing but there But there's right nothing there right now. So Echo points, shakes their head, and makes the noise of fire again. Set it on fire. Echo, uh, can you have... Copy, go see what that light is, or is that too far for you? If a mile's too far, right? A half mile. Half mile. Can't, can't see. Copy, stick out. Please. 
So I'll just send copy. I can't look through their eyes that far away. So I'll just send copy okay. while we're dealing with the uh, scarecrows over here. Okay. I will throw a fireball. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before you... <laughs> the wait. hand is lit up. Oh. <laughs> We don't know that that is actually what we are looking for. What if there are others and we just burn down someone's crops? That is very expensive. But there's You're no right. crops. That's what I was just confirming is that there's no crops right now. Okay, so it's just land. But, right. But you're not wrong, Ivan. Maybe we should talk. Maybe we should find some people? Sex. We do need to take the sex, so if we set them on fire, we cannot get the sex. I shall go get the sex, and then you should light them on fire. Should we try and talk to people first? The scarecrow? No, 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 no. Talk to, like, try and find, like, the farmers. Why don't we get the sex and then light the rest of them on fire? Did I see any other people out here when I was, when Copy was looping? No, you didn't see any uh, people, but Copy did notice uh, about a half mile to the east, on the other side of the clearing on the east, there was a house. It looked like a little one-story, maybe 30 by 30 uh, building. Uh, how far away was it? It was about a half mile to the east of the eastern clearing. East. So there's the, the clearing itself is like a half mile wide in mm. square form. And then on the Eastern side of that half mile from where the road trail is, there sits a, a little building. Side. Yeah. Oh, point at it. People. Yes, we should go check that. I'm going to go look at the scarecrow first though. I will go with you, Ivan. But please do not light it on fire. I will not light it on fire. <laughs> light it on fire. <laughs> Later. Um, so Ivan and I are going to go check out the, the scarecrow real quick to figure out, I, I want to do like, like look at it, make sure I don't see any like symbols of arcane, arcane that would like make them come to life or, um, anything like inside them that would make that happen. Anything magical. I'm looking for blood. <laughs> okay. You roll While an arcana they're... check, and then you roll an investigation check. Go ahead. While they're doing that, I want to untie my horse from Shiloh's horse. Just in case we have to make a run for it. I don't know. <laughs> Just while that's happening. Echo anticipating disaster early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a divination wizard for a reason. <laughs> divination magic. Divination magic. <laughs> High wisdom. <laughs> Uh, that is an 18, Joe. Okay. You don't sense any magical incantations currently on it, but you, you get a feeling that perhaps there was, like, a residual, like, worn-off kind of feeling. Like, it's not currently magical, but perhaps there's, like, a residual arcanic nature to this uh, scarecrow. Okay. Ivan, you see blood on the back side of the scarecrow on the right shoulder blade. There is like a slash mark and what looks like blood that has just kind of like started dripping from that slash wound. Um, Shiloh? Yes. Question? Yes. What are the the scarecrow uh, made out of? He's like trying to like like peel at it. Just see um, scarecrows are usually made out of um out of like hay and like plants. Why? As you're peeling, <laughs> you look at your the tips of your fingers and they're kind of sticky and there's this wet red residue it smells like blood it's very iron heavy oh i should have take out hands. i'm gonna take out old reliable and i'm just gonna like what are you <laughs> what what just like tear it open I, I will go around the scarecrow to see what the hell is happening because i was in front of it as you come around the edge of the scarecrow, Ivan jabs Old Reliable into the back of the scarecrow and pulls down. 
and you hear the sound of flesh tearing and bone popping <gasps> as blood sprays out into Ivan's face. Oh, 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 oh that's messy. This is not made out of hay. You lied to me. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's what it's normally made out of. What the fuck? Um, I'm going to uh, go back to the front and pull the sack off the head. Wait, I shall just cut it down. No, 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 I've already said what I'm doing. (laughs) So you walk around and hay just kind of falls, but you see the open uh, wound to a torso where a head would be, and you see the spine kind of sticking out in the back. Uh, uh, Shiloh? (laughs) He just like goes in front. No, wait, 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 wait. okay, it's fine. Um, uh, 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 you look for for crows, and I will, uh, 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 he just turns around and just grabs his axe and just, like, starts chopping this bitch down. Um, I'm, I'm going over to the next one and pulling it off, too. Is there a, I'm, I'm making sure. You're more than welcome to do that, but they're about a hundred feet apart, so it's going to oh, take you a Shiloh's second to just get like there. Running. Okay. Shiloh, wait. Uh, Echo, you get a chill, and then you hear in the distance where you had sent copy a car, 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 as it comes flying out of the wood line, and it's just like copy is. <coughs> pardon me. <clears throat> Copy's okay. choking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me. Mm. Uh, also- Copy is just making a beeline straight for you. You get the the connection, the sense. It's too far out for them to, for you to communicate at this point, but you get the the I sense that it that Copy is absolutely terrified. Problem. Echo, Echo is Copy okay? It only takes about, you know, 40 seconds for the bird to make it to the point where you can now communicate. And you hear in your head, Strahd, 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 Strahd. <laughs> Let's start doing that is the question. Hmm. I mean, we don't have, we haven't decided what else to call him yet. <laughs> Strahd, 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 Strahd. <laughs> Vex goes, Whoosh, the wind's just like <laughs> <laughs> I'm running through the field as this wind is just like <laughs> Wait <laughs> Ivan has Peacemaker like hold on Let's go You hear Vex shout to you, Shiloh, let's go and you you see co- you see Copy flying because you're heading in the direction that Copy is coming from. Uh kind of a little bit to the west, but same general direction, and you see Copy flying, you hear the Kenku shouting, Strahd, Strahd, Strahd. Do you continue to run, or what do you do? I mean, listen, I am a woman on a mission. I need to make sure that this scarecrow is not full of dead people as well. Okay. Strahd! 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 So you get to that scarecrow, uh, while everyone else is panicking, and you rip off the burlap, and there's again a torso without a head, the straw just onto the ground. And with that, I have my two sacks, and I run back towards Ivan. <laughs> um. um. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm, I, I, when I was running towards you, if I was about to go past you, I would have grabbed you too. It would have been like, okay, back to group, regrouping. Okay. But the, okay. As you're running back towards the group and uh, Echo is yelling, Strahd, Strahd, Strahd. And uh, <laughs> Vex is yelling, come on, let's go. We got to get going. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw, Shiloh. Oh, good. <laughs> like at some point, it just kind of... The- not good at those. Uh, so. At some point, uh, Strahd uh, devolves into ah ah. ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a thirteen. Ouch. Hey. Oh. Uh, <laughs> God damn it. I'm saying, Flappy, that's not bad. And then you say, ouch, and it's not good. 
Okay. So as you're running towards the group in front of you, a lightning bolt strikes the ground and you're thrown about 10 feet to the west and you land and you don't take any bludgeoning damage, but you are thrown 10 feet as the lightning strikes the ground in front of you. And as everyone looks up, you can see that there are clouds just moving and morphing from this gray, subtle cloud to a dark, looming, threatening thunderstorm cloud. Get inside. I think maybe Let's you go. said his name too many times. <laughs> Should we go towards the house? Uh, That's it's probably the closest, closest way. Thing. Yeah, let's go. Uh, oh, why don't okay. we just go see Strut? No, no. Ah! ah, ah. I run. <laughs> well, obviously he wants to talk to us. He's been watching us. With lightning bolts. <laughs> I am I am up and I'm just taking off towards the house. Fuck my Me horse. Too. You see lightning striking in the forest to the south. And it is starting to get very windy. The wind is picking up. You can see the trees starting to kind of creak and bend. Yes, please. I am so reminded of Missouri and I miss tornado season. <laughs> <laughs> you miss tornado season? It's a very interesting time to live in those states, man. Yeah, okay. it's like rain comes from the bottom up. It's weird. Shiloh, you hear a... No, I'm just the tornado alarm. Oh, not, the tor- <laughs> <laughs> not the tornado sirens, no! <laughs> those things are scary as shit. Yeah, Vex is going as fast as she can to the house, too. Uh, yeah, so okay. I hope my horse is I- following all of you. Vex and I are still on horses. We're gonna... At least I'm gonna... I don't know if Echo knows how to Are you guys drive a horse. The horses? I'll go get the horses. It's I'm not as concerned <laughs> as it. everybody else. From- I mean, if I get hit by lightning, I'm pretty sure I'm dead. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Shiloh, are you just running? You're not on. Yeah, right? I was thrown ten feet, okay. so I'm just like, up, oh, go. <laughs> so I'll go by Shiloh and try to see if she can get on the horse with me cool beans i'm gonna jump onto this horse okay so we've got two horses echo and and vex and then shiloh's on ivan is going back for the other horses and ivan as you go to reach for one of the horses a lightning bolt strikes one of the trees uh to the east uh just past the uh clearing that you're in and it spooks the horses i need you to roll an animal handling to see if you can grab both of them and calm them down hey. enough. These poor horses. Waste of a nat 20. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a bad night because that's not. <laughs> <laughs> so they begin to kind of rear up and spook and you just grab the reins and you're like, <laughs> no! And you set, settle them down and calm them down enough to grab them and move them towards the house. All right. And just as you reach the house, as you're the last to kind of approach the house, the uh, the rains let loose, and it is a torrential downpour um, as you are. The rain just kind of like sweeps across the clearing towards the house. And you are standing at the front door of this house. What would you all like to do? I open I'm the door. banging on it. I jump I just, off. I just open the door. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Vex, you're banging on the door, and it is open. So as you're banging, it just kind of slowly creaks open. I run inside. Shiloh just like right into it. (laughs) And inside this, uh, this house is you go into a foyer. It's probably a 10 foot by 10 foot room and you can see it. There's no door. It's just like an archway that leads back and you can see a kitchen that is completely disheveled and like somebody has ransacked through the kitchen and you can see on the other side of the kitchen on the right hand side there's a door and it is shut How big was this house yep, probably about 30 feet by 30 feet it's not very oh, okay. big just like a little bitty farmhouse kind yeah of thing. okay and a single story there's no stairs uh, but in this little initial kind of room uh there's paper and straw and you can see like what looks like wax splattered against the floor and the walls which is great i am going to lock the door witches okay. you shut the door and... okay which witches? i'm 
is there going any... oh sorry is there any place to put the horses <laughs> also thank god it's raining i'm not dirty anymore <laughs> are you standing outside okay okay as soon as I noticed you weren't in, I would unlock the door and go, Ivan! Yes? Get in here, please! Okay. Ivan, Thank there, you. there is a little trough sitting on the uh, southern side of the house. And there's a, uh, I don't know what they're called, but there's two posts and a post hitching across. Post? The hitching post. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there's a hitching post next to the trough. So... All, all of the like these girls just came in and just like left the horse he's like what is wrong with you people i'm a city bird thank you <laughs> so yeah Babies. <coughs> you successfully tie up the horses to the hitching post mm, sorry let me grab a drink real quick go ahead and rp for a minute vex uh, is gonna go listen at the door that's closed okay i'm gonna i'm gonna pick up some of these papers are they like written papers you do see uh, arcane symbols on them. Okay, I'm gonna sit and like try and study those a little bit to figure out what they are. I okay. wanted to like pick at the wax question mark. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. are you picking or pecking? Pick. Okay. With the claw, not with the beak, with the claw. Okay. She's not Ivan. She's not gonna put her mouth on it. <laughs> not yet. So just kind of picking the wax off the wall. Like just like seeing if it's wax. Okay. As you're pulling through, you can determine it is definitely beeswax. Hmm. Weird. Um, is there a particular pattern to the way that the wax is, like, was it thrown? Was it splattered? Was it exploded? Okay. Before we get to that, Ivan, you tied up the horses and you came around to the door. And as you were going inside, I need you to roll me a perception check to see if you notice this. You're pretty distracted, so I'm going to make you roll for it. Perception, right? Yes. yes. No. <laughs> As a <in> nat one. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> nope, you don't notice it. Never mind. I brought so copy here inside of the door. Yes, copy is now perched up on your, yeah. your thing. And then Shiloh, you shut and lock the door again. Ivan, as you're looking around, there does seem to be a distinct <laughs> X pattern that kind of goes across the walls and across the floor and then back up to the other side and then across so that there's a center point in this foyer where the two lines kind of cross and it just seems to be like splattered across the wall in an in an x formation I want to hey echo hmm? and he like kind of points it out the pattern and then like leads to the where it's the center is there anything in the center <clears throat> just a, an a, amalgamation of wax that is built up. I want to look at the papers that Shiloh's looking at. Okay. I'm looking at the papers. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to those two in a second. <laughs> yeah. Vex, you kind of lean in and you're listening at the door and you can definitely hear mumbling from the other side. Um, you, you, it's it's The door is too thick for you to really make out what is being said, but you can definitely hear common mumbling okay i'm gonna try to open the door it is locked and i'm gonna try to pick the lock god All i'm right. so used to being a rogue <laughs> uh. go ahead and roll your sleight of hand if you have thieves tools which i believe you do you can use those and i think that gives you your proficiency like you have expertise in them you can roll with that Okay. It's actually, it's honestly usually the same thing as your uh, sleight of hand. Because it's like dex plus proficiency. Right, but sometimes sleight of hand versus if you're using yeah, these tools and you have expertise in them, you can mm -hmm. add that on top. Yeah. 15. 15? Yeah. So you mess with it for maybe about 30 seconds, and it seems like a very simple lock. You've unlocked things like this before, and it's just easy peasy. Click. Okay, I'm gonna pull out my rapier and I'm gonna kick it open. Yeah, you 
<clears throat> pop that door open, and everybody is startled by the sound of the door slamming. First your foot hitting the door, and then the door slamming against the wall. And everyone hears a... Ah! 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 Uh, 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 Vex, uh. you kick the door open, and on this bed, there is a an old man. Oh, God. Skin hanging off of his bones. Like, very... Very scrawny, very wrinkly. He's got a long, white, and gray peppered beard. And his hair is kind of... It looks like it, at one point in time it was pulled up into like a little man bun. But it's so disheveled and messed up at this point, it's just like a big rat's nest on top of his head. And he's just... Ah! And he's terrified as he's sitting there looking at you. Uh, we're, we're here to save you. Don't worry. <laughs> Excellent save. She says with the rapier <laughs> after <laughs> kicking in a door. <laughs> oh shit! My I'm sure she had a mean black. face too. <laughs> Did our stream just go down again? This has happened uh, last time. Let me look. Because my both my screens no. went blank. I no. still see it. Well, but we have a delay, so I'm refreshing because. Okay, because the last time this happened, when I downloaded the VOD, there was a section in there that was all audio, and it was like, be right back. It looks like it's fine. Yeah. Downloaded the VOD. Okay. Oh, refresh the page. I don't know. Well. Okay, I don't know what's going on. That's the second time that's happened. That's really weird. Maybe it's the Curse of Strahd. <gasps> don't say his name! He said the thing in the name! <laughs> oh! <laughs> he said the name of the game! He said the name of the game! <laughs> yeah, um, it seems to be fine. Um, okay, okay. so... As he's like terrified and you're like, we're here to save you. You see his eyes roll back into his head and he flops over in the bed. Hey, Joe, what do these papers say while my rogue friend has killed somebody with a heart attack? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> As you're looking through the arcanic symbols, uh, roll me an arcana check. You're going to have advantage on this and the DC's fairly low. Sweet. Because you're familiar with this kind of stuff. Uh, 17. Okay. So, uh, Shiloh, you definitely recognize these are as arcanic symbols. They, they seem to be something involved with a ritual. Okay. Shiloh, you definitely recognize at least three or four of these symbols. And as you're looking at them, a flash in your mind goes back to a burning building with blood dripping in the same arcanic symbol that's on this paper. And then you're pulled back out of that. Oh, well, that's not good. Um, fuck. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, put the symbols in my bag. And I'm going to go see what Vex did. Okay. Because I'm thoroughly disturbed with the blood and the fire and the rune and everything. Gotcha. <laughs> so you're putting these runes in your backpack? Yes. Okay. Notate that you have them. I, yes. Thank you. I was just like peeking over Vex's shoulder like, is, did he die? Can't hear you. You're muted, Vex. Sorry. Vex is going to say, I don't know, I found him like this. <laughs> Shit. Uh, can I go check the dude to make sure he's not dead? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, is there I'm anything else in the room, too? The, the only part of the house that's not destroyed, like wrecked, like it's been ransacked through, is this room. There's a bed stand with a candlestick that is currently burning. Um, you see several parchments and a quill and paper, uh, quill and ink. And it looks like there was recent, like he was drawing recently. And on the floor of this room, there's ink in the shape of the runic symbol that was in the front door. Also, it... at the foot of the bed, there is a chest. Do is it... Go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, uh, I know I helped um, Shiloh look at it. Do I recognize the symbol? You like recognize it, it as... Related to? 
you recognize oh, they, it as... just as a ritual. Yeah. Okay. Like any certain type of magic, like evocation, abjuration. What is the school for uh, protections? That's abjuration. abjuration. Protection. Okay, yeah. Abjuration. You'd be mm. able to recognize it as an abjuration ritual spell or rune. Hmm. Protection? <clears throat> Point at it. Okay, Protection. I'm, I'm going to go check the guy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sir, can I look at the drawings he had while she does that? <laughs> okay, so you're looking at the drawings on the table. You're looking at the uh, individual. Echo, you've kind of at, pointed out the, the symbol on the floor and that that's mm -hmm. a protection. Vex, what are you doing? I'm going to kind of pretend like I'm looking at the guy, but try to lift the chest. <laughs> okay. The lid of the chest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as you lift open the, you kind of peek into the chest. You you see that there's several uh, items of like really nice looking clothing, like silken robes with gold filigree. Like these are pretty fancy, uh, and a pretty fancy outfit sitting to the right. There is a little what looks like a little coin purse sitting in the middle, and there are two books at the bottom of this chest, kind of stacked up against each other. Okay. Um, I'll just kind of close it again, but I'll see if the guy's okay. Okay. Ivan, you have reached over and uh, poked the guy. He is unresponsive, and his uh, skin feels very cold. Clammy, almost. Ivan, is he okay? <laughs> Shake, Shake him. him a little bit. Just a little bit, yeah. Sir? Unresponsive. Okay, Vex opens the chest now and grabs the books. <laughs> what the fuck? No, I showed you the books. Is, is there like a loose piece of paper nearby? Just the like papers the that were on the chest or on the nightstand. Okay, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it right under his nose to see if he's breathing. Okay, Shiloh, you see a hand come across and try to grab one of the papers that the runes that you're looking at are written on. You do recognize there's a lot of abjuration ritual runes like these are protection spells that this guy is trying to cast <laughs> echo what were you doing again i'm sorry there's a lot going on i had been looking at the runes and i think i'm i think i'm probably distracted with the uh sight of books inside the chest okay so as vex pulls out the books you see those two books vex what you're holding is yes. one of them is a spell tome that looks maybe hundreds of years old it's very worn the spine is worn out to the point where you can't really make out what the title of the book is but as you kind of open it up there are two spells in this book that you can read i throw it to echo okay ah! <laughs> what spells could were they i will get you that in just a minute <laughs> okay stand back <laughs> Um, and then the other book is what looks like a little tiny personal diary. And okay. as you kind of flip through it, it doesn't look as old as the other book. It looks fairly recent, but there's a lot of pages. And as you kind of look through, you notice that it's dated and you kind of go to the front of the book and the front of the book is hundreds of years old. And there's hundreds of years of diary entries in this book. Is this guy human? I'm going to flip to the back and see the last entry. The last entry was actually dated about 40 years ago. And it, it reads, My dearest, I'm so sorry that I'm leaving you behind. It's beyond my control. I wish you nothing but the best. Love, Tatiana. I'm busy reading the spell tome. I think he might be a wizard, this guy. Don't know why I he would have thought such a thing. He might be dead. 
<laughs> Ivan's just like with the paper in his nose, like, I'll be the chairman of that. Ivan, the paper is not moving. He's dead. But you see like these little droplets coming from the nose on the onto the paper. Like blood or they're clear. I didn't shake them that hard. Uh, I um guess I'll check for a pulse, but like I don't <laughs> Okay, roll me a I'm medicine check. I'm trying to be check. very gentle. <laughs> roll me a medicine check. Come on, you dumb Viking. <laughs> no. Breaks a rib. Four. Jeez. Oh, so you're looking for a pulse in his chest, on his abdomen. You, like, feel his forehead. <laughs> you don't get it. I should anything. have paid better attention to this. Mother was very specific about this, and this is what she meant about paying attention, and I regret everything. I need a grown-up. I'm gonna... I'm gonna be real mean and pinch this old man to see if I can get him to wake up. God, we're just, like... <laughs> disrespecting them. You pinch the skin? Yeah. And there's no response. He's dead. You you dead him. You scared him to death, Vex. I think Echo says. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Echo sees the uh, the other the other book that Vex has, and she tosses it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna step back out of the room. <laughs> I, I need a minute. <laughs> I'm gonna try to tickle his feet since I'm at the foot of the bed. Is it still raining? <laughs> it is still raining outside. Yes. <clears throat> Can I see out the window? <clears throat> There are two windows, one on each side of the foyer, but they're not close enough to see out both of them. You'd have to decide which window you're looking out. To Vex, left? as you go to tickle the feet, you realize there are boots on this man. Do you want to try to tickle the bottom of the boots? <laughs> no. Boots or bed? taking the I'm boots off? I'm going to the blanket off. Was the... he in bed? No, he was yeah. sitting on top of the bed. He wasn't oh, in bed. Oh, okay, okay, okay. He's in clothes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Oh. We're very bad at this, guys. <laughs> we don't have a holy character. <laughs> what were we thinking? <laughs> I'm going to go up to him and feel like this. You feel a very cold and clammy skin, but there's no reaction. Is there any liquid in here that I could like, throw on his face? You don't see anything other than the hot wax from the candle that's melting. No, oh. I'm not that kinky. I have water. <laughs> if you have I'll, water skins, yeah. And the yeah, holy water I'll, that you I'll, got. I'll, I'll pour a little water on him. Just waterboard this him. guy. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> waterboard. Yeah, that's what he gets for being dead. <laughs> mm. I need you to be specific about what water you're using. Oh. oh, um, hmm. I was only halfway thinking about the thing I'm about to do, but now I think I'm going to do I, it. I think I'm going to try some of the water from the well. Okay, specifically the water that you got from the well for drinking. Yes. So you kind of dump a little bit of water on them and there's him and there's no reaction. Okay, why did you ask that question? I'm very confused. I just wanted <laughs> you to be specific because you- I were mean I, I do have water. holy water as well. Echo is not educated in the ways of medicine, but I have one thing I can do. I'm going to hit him with protection from evil and good. Okay. Undead. Yeah. What does that do specifically? It um, protects, protects us against, from him. <laughs> no, it protects him from one certain type of creature. From us. Um, uh, so basically, the, uh, undead and other types of undead types of creatures have disadvantage on attack rolls against him, and the cr target cannot be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. If the target is already charmed, frightened, or possessed by such a creature, the target has advantage on any new saving throw against the re uh, relevant effect. Okay, and you're casting that on him, so you really wouldn't know, like if there was no reaction. It... I don't know. You would get a it... sense that the the spell was effective, but you right. wouldn't. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know if like he's under something that I could give him another saving throw from. I don't know. Boop. Okay. 
So yeah, you cast that, and you you get the sense that your spell was success, successfully cast, um, but there's no reaction. Uh, I'm gonna leave the room. I'm like, this guy is dead. We can't do anything. Ivan, which window yeah. did you say you looked out? To the left. Okay. To the left. To the left. Everything he owns is in a box in that corner. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Um, you look out the window and you notice that uh, the two scarecrows that you have beheaded are still up on their racks, but the other scarecrows in the fields are completely gone. <sighs> How many? He like, he like narrows his eyes and like looks at them. There's How many were there total? There were like eight in the the whole field area, and you've dis disheaded beheaded two of them. So six of them are currently missing. You can see clearly the wooden post that they were on, but no scarecrows. This sounds terrible. Um, hey guys. Oh, what's up? I'm walking into the room. I don't want to freak anybody out. Too late. <laughs> Fair. Well, since you're not freaked out, you know those scarecrows that were on the sticks that we didn't behead? Well, they're not there anymore. And I don't know, maybe their wind blew them away because it's kind of windy. But I do not think that the wind is strong enough to blow a body away because it kind of seemed like there was bodies inside of them. Not bodies. Body. Bodies inside of them? Oh, right. Yeah, so we found bodies. Mm hmm Bodies inside of them? Yeah. Yes, there was yeah. bodies inside of, instead of the hay, looks at <laughs> Shiloh. <laughs> there was no hay except the face? Yes. Ivan, I did not like your tone. You saw how I reacted when I didn't see hay inside the body. Echo reconsiders. Well, you were covered uh, in blood everywhere like I was. I'm Echo sorry. reconsiders their uh, familiar's scent of, uh, sense of smell. Because <laughs> so, Copy landed on it and did not notice. So, Can so, I yeah. look out the window? Yeah, you look out the window and you see the two headless. Joe, can I Corpses. look out the other window? <laughs> You're going over to the right side of the room. <laughs> side. And you look out the window and you see nothing. Oh, thank God. I was going to say, it's either the scarecrows or it's straw just like stop. <laughs> no, 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 look, it would be fucking Doug. <laughs> He's gonna You're, so right, You're so right, though. You're so right, though. A lightning flash fills the entire house with bright light for a quick second. And then you hear in the back of the house, thud. Thud, 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 thud. Like something heavy is hitting the house. <laughs> yeah, agreed. It's just Barry. Barry! <laughs> Barry! Damn it, I told him to stay inside. He's is here this... to save us. Is it still raining outside? It is still raining. Um, in Vex fact, is just are you going to go get it or again. should I? Vex, you open the oh. chest again. Go ahead. Is there anything else in there? The coin purse and the really fancy clothing. Okay, I was going to see if there's any weapons. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm going to do a dumb thing. I'm no, you are not. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm going to sneak around the house to look to see what's hitting the house. Hello. You're going outside? Hello. Sure. Shiloh. Uh, no. No. <laughs> wait. 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 There's one thing that's been bothering me since we got here, and it's something the flower lady said. Okay. Okay. Remember when she was pulling all those weird cards out, and she said something about a floor, and a girl, and a father, and the middle of the floor? It, like... Oh, yes and no. Echo pulls like out their any... notebook. Does any? Does it look like anyone else lived in here? 
as far as you can tell, it was just the man. It's just the one bedroom. <clears throat> okay, That's Joe, are there any windows that face the back of the house? Nope, Is there the a door? The nope. <laughs> it's just the one door in the front. But wait, also, if this person has had these scarecrows out there this whole entire time, how come he is not dead? I mean, besides now dead. Abjuration um, magic. Yeah, all of these runes are protection, protection spells. He, which is probably what part of this wax is as well. It was him trying to protect himself, his house, possibly his family, which might be in the scarecrows. And um, That's somehow it failed. Ivan. But find a girl driven to insanity, locked in the heart of her dead father's house. But he is not. Huh. He's dead now. <laughs> but we are in the center of the house now. There is nothing here. Could there be a hidden door, though? I'm going to push the bed and see if there's like a trap door. Um, Just shove the body off. <laughs> I would like to make. I, I would like yes, to make a point that uh, Echo is putting, now that I have clarified that, I'm going to put away my notebook. And is there utensils in the kitchen? There are several wooden utensils, yes. Forks, little wooden spoons. Are there metal pans in the kitchen? There is one, like, raw iron pan. It's it's pretty big. It's about the size of a wok. Cool. <clears throat> cool. I'm going I to... I guess woks come in multiple sizes, don't they? Did, I'm picturing did, my walk, which is like a 10-inch diameter. I'm okay. gonna keep a hold of that uh, and uh, just 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 keep that by me in case I need to use a catapult <laughs> spell. Okay. Just in case. Makes sense. Makes sense. And I'm gonna Ivan. watch that door. <laughs> I, Ivan. We have to see what's hitting the, the back of the house. We do not. But I will. No, I don't want you going alone. But I do not want you going alone either. So shall we go together? <sighs> I mean, yes, I guess, but... Uh, what is uh, that noise, uh, Joe? Uh, On uh, both sides of the house, you hear this scraping of, like, metal on wood, and it, it sounds like it's digging into the wooden walls on the outside, just... We may not have to go out. They're coming to us. Can Vex fit in the trunk? <laughs> <laughs> yes, she can. She could indeed fit in this trunk. I like the way you think. <laughs> no, she's going to grab the gnomes really quick and she's just going to stand in the trunk just in case. The horse is no wait! He just opens the door. No! I grab Ivan and shut the door back. Step, step. <clears throat> but the horses. I don't think they're after the horses. I think they're after us. Vex, were you actually trying to move the bed? Yes. Okay. Um, it's not anchored to the uh, ground or anything, so you're able to kind of easily slide it out of the way. Um, and underneath, you see another inked uh, ritual rune. And underneath that, there is a small trap door. It's about four foot by four foot square. Cool. I'm going to try to pry it open. Perfect. <laughs> you trying to kind of open it, and it's there's this... Uh, iron knocker like ring and you're trying to pull it and it seems like there's uh, it's like locked or barred from the other side and to the right of that ring you see there's a keyhole okay um you guys do you think we should hide in here i found a door found a door found hide a door. in here okay. uh i start like pushing people towards the back that back room but i'm keeping an eye on the window in case i see what's coming I have my I'm gonna start picking that lock. Okay. I shall also guard the door. Vex, I need you to roll your sleight of hand. DC thirteen. Uh, sixteen plus four, so uh, a flaccid twenty. Oh no! <laughs> no! no! <laughs> so you pull out your uh, your thieves' tools, and uh, they go limp and. <laughs> pop that lock <laughs> and you're able to pull up that trap door and uh, there's a ladder that leads down into darkness do you have dark vision yes okay so you can see down in there in shades of gray it seems to be uh, a very small like five foot by five foot little hole in the ground 
Um, it's it looks wet. It almost looks like there's a, a very small layer of water at the bottom of the ladder. What? Nothing else seems to. You just see wood, uh, dirt walls. Should we hide in here? Why are we I... hiding? Oh, hide in here. Come on, guys. But if uh, we the would scraping be stops suddenly, hide in here. And you hear on the front door. Hide in here. Did Back I see out the, the window? <laughs> Did I see anything walk past the window? Yeah, I'm, I'm nope. still at the window. <laughs> you didn't see anything. The sound just stopped, and then the. The sound of the scraping just stopped on the sides of the houses, and then you just hear on the front door. Who is it? <laughs> Ivan's gonna tap back. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna tap back on the door? Mm -hmm. You hear from the other side of the door, may I come in? <gasps> Don't invite him in. <laughs> I just, I pull Ivan and go, mm! <laughs> Um, sorry, uh, we are busy we're right now. Open. Yep. Very, uh, it's, no. The door begins to open slightly. Uh, I, I go and quickly, like, push and close and lock <laughs> it. The answer is no! Please come back another time! I'm down in the hole with my head just kicking out. You hear it. <laughs> <laughs> And then the rain stops falling on the roof. Goes back to the window. <laughs> My back is like firmly pressed against the door so he can't come in. Echo is peeking around the hey. corner, or peeking around the door frame, looking at the door, clutching the pan. <laughs> hey Shiloh, what is stopping him from coming inside? Me? You. <laughs> I mean, there are windows. He could just open a window and come inside. I don't know a lot. Do I know a lot about vampire lore? I don't think I we do. We also don't know that he's a vampire necessarily. Yeah, I don't know who this is. Um, you know, decency and politeness. In the window. <laughs> <laughs> are you seriously opening a window? That ass. Open would... the window. You know what stops him from going through a window is that he is a man of decorum. <laughs> no. He just opened to... open the door when we said no. He's a dick. Fuck this guy. As you're opening the window, you feel a cold, clammy hand grasp your hand, and around the corner you can see a burlap sack with a <gasps> mouth-shaped face, kind of crook into a smile. Ew. As it Ew. comes around, I open the door and firebolt. Okay. I am saving your ass. And Everyone roll scout. initiative. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. And Shiloh, what did you roll? A dirty 20. All right. Thank you. Echo, what did you roll? What was my initiative bonus? It's a three, so I got a 15. <clears throat> All right. Vex, what did you roll? I rolled a six. Oh, Because wow. <laughs> she's down there. I don't blame you. <laughs> Ivendor. You're probably the smartest one. Team. What? Team? 14. 14. All right. Auto roll initiative for them and start. All right. So the scarecrow that has a hold of you, Ivan, um, glares at you and you almost feel this burning sensation in your eyes and i need you to roll a uh wisdom saving throw the dc is 11. ivan <laughs> no i don't like that i don't like that no <laughs> not one <laughs> uh you are frightened and terrified and paralyzed until you can reroll at the end of your turn to break that frightened condition, but you are 
completely terrified as this thing is looking at you. These dead, sunken burlap eye holes. Not made of hay. <laughs> Not made of hay. <laughs> You're never going to let that go. Shiloh, you get your fireball off. Go ahead. Oh, for point blank damage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. One. Shut up. Why did you say things like that? Um, <laughs> if that's a 15 to hit. That hits. She says angry. I am angry because. <laughs> Uh, five that points of damage. Five. Down. Rude. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <clears throat> Do I see how many are outside the door now? <clears throat> Pardon me, sorry. Yes, you uh, let your fireball fly and you see that it catches this burlap sack and it just immediately erupts into fire and it is currently on fire and you can see the singe of the thing is burning away the clothing and you can see that torso behind it. It's got sticks for legs that the the uh, clothing, the pants, has kind of burned away and revealing like these like branches, these thick like six inch diameter branches for legs. <laughs> and uh, you see that there are two other scarecrows coming around the corner towards the house. <clears throat> Uh, and that's going to bring us to, unless you have any bonus actions or movement. Uh, I'm uh, going to back up a little bit away from the door. Okay. Um, I would try to get Ivan to follow me, not knowing that he is paralyzed. All right. Echo, you're up. Ivan Door, you'll have your chance after Echo to do your wisdom save. Okay, so I can see where Ivan is standing at the doorway, and I see that there's a scarecrow right there, right? The scarecrow is, yes, in the window, kind of looking into Ivan, and has Ivan kind of grappled, in a sense. Uh, what I would like to do is uh, move a little closer on the ground in that five-foot space in front of the window to cover the front of the window so nothing can come through. Because Is it like a big window? Or is it like a little window? Like a, like a it's pretty big. Window. It's about four and a half feet wide, cool. and about five feet tall i am going to in that space i'm going to create a bonfire okay right next to ivan kind of in in front like of on the outside basically so that anything that tries to climb into the window has to go through the fire gotcha okay so on the outside mm -hmm. okay nice and that's a cantrip yeah that's... and uh as that creature's hand is in the window on ivan that would put his hand in the fire as you create it. So he's unfortunately yes. Yeah. Hey, Not okay. Ivan's the oh. scarecrow. The scarecrow's oh, okay, hand fine. is inside, like coming <laughs> yeah. into the window and okay. grabbing onto Ivan. If it starts, unfortunately, <laughs> if it starts its turn in the fire, then uh, uh, oh, any creature in the bonfire space when you cast a spell must succeed on deck saving throw. It, it also makes a saving throw when it moves into the bonfire space for the first time or ends its turn there. Okay, so it has to make that dex throw, but it's currently grappled, so I'm going to say that it automatically fails that, because the fire, it, it's engaged with Ivan. Neat. So go ahead and roll that damage. Neat. That's six fire damage. Okay. Oh, and that's concentration. Okay, good to know. So yeah, you see the, the fleshy parts kind of begin to kind of melt away, revealing yeah. bone and tenue. And... It smells hideous <laughs> um and did shiloh close the door back nope i'm gonna send copy outside okay so copy f gets off your to shoulder and flies just start around fucking with the the scarecrows okay all right because so... <laughs> revenge of the crows <laughs> yep. so glad we got two of them to stop by pulling off those heads <laughs> Ivan, yeah. go ahead and roll your uh, wisdom saving throw. Hey, you. That's a 19. Okay, you uh, you snap out of it. And oh. uh, you kind of realize that this, this thing's got a loose grip on your hand. It's easy to break the thing's grip. It's not like yeah. you're grappled, but... Yeah, I'm just going to... All right, and that brings us to the other two scarecrows that are currently coming around the bend. They're going to spend their movement coming around, and Shiloh, you're still kind of, like, 
in the door, but kind of backed away, right? Uh, I would have backed up as far as I could, but still been in the door. Okay. To... I, the the thing is like a 30 foot room and the 10 foot by 10 foot foyer yeah. by the door. So you could back up. <laughs> You'd have your full 30, 30 feet. Okay. Um, I probably, yeah, I'd back up about, about 25, I think. Okay. So you're back up uh, into the kitchen. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they're going to spend their movement to come around. So one of them's going to stand right in front of the door. Mm-hmm. And the other one is going to come and be kind of right behind it. So they're going single file in th- into the door. Okay. Um, they can't reach anybody at this point. So that's going to bring us to Vex, who is currently standing uh, waist deep into a chest. Actually, I was down the... Uh, oh, that's right. You had moved down into the... Yeah. So I'm going... Can I see what's going on in that bedroom? Yep. Okay. All right. I guess I'll climb back out and... Um, can I see one of the scarecrows to shoot an arrow at them? You can see a bonfire and a hand sticking out through the bonfire in the window to the left, and then you can see there's a scarecrow right in the doorway, and you can see a scarecrow behind it, but you can't really, because they're kind of standing single file. Okay, I'm going to shoot the first scarecrow with an arrow. Okay, go ahead and roll your attack. Ten. That's just just kind of barely skims through the, uh, and it kind of tears loose the clothing as the arrow skims past. You can hear the the clothing kind of rip through, um, and it just kind of nicks the flesh, and you can see a little blood spurt, but it really doesn't doesn't connect. Okay. Do you have any bonus actions or anything? No. Okay. Um. You know what? I'll try to hide. Actually. Okay. Bonus action hide. Uh, roll your stealth. Nine. Okay. You just kind of peek down, and the only thing that's really sticking out is like right above your eyes. You're just kind of peeking. Uh, and that's going to bring us to the scarecrow who starts his turn in the bonfire. So. Do you have to re-roll that damage? Uh, or does he automatically take a certain amount of damage? Uh, it, creature must also make the saving throw when it moves into the bonfire space for the first time or ends its turn there. Okay. So, so if he stays in the bonfire, he has to make the deck save. Gotcha. Okay. So he is going to react and pull his hand out of the fire and back up a little bit. But then he's going to uh, to reach through the fire to try and claw at Ivan. So Ivan does... That's a plus three. 18, 19, 20. Does a 21 hit you, Ivan? Just a little bit. Okay. So these long fingernails just kind of scrape across to your, your chest there. And you're going to take the 2d4 plus one. Three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you take nine slashing damage. Nine, nine. I hope it scars. Um, and in order to do that, he's he doesn't have any other uh, actions or anything. So he does have multi attack though. So I guess he's going to try and claw again at Ivan through the window. Does a fifteen hit you, Ivan? Yeah, I don't have my shield. I don't have my shield. Okay. So that's one, and five is six, seven, eight. No, seven. Seven slashing damage. As he comes across with the other cloth. I am not okay. (laughs) You have a potion, remember that. I'm going to need it. (laughs) Uh, All right, so that is that. Yeah, his turn, and he's going to end his turn standing. How big is that fire? It's a, it, a, it takes up five, a five foot it's radius, a five foot right? Cube. Yeah. Okay. So he's going to take his uh, his action to or his movement to move just outside of that fire. Um, and I mean, just kind of stay there. there. 
Just, just stay over there. <laughs> so he's not climbing through the window, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, Shiloh, yes, you're okay. up. I'm going to cast at the the scarecrow in front of me. Uh, I'm going to cast Chaos Bolt. Okay. Do and, it. Oh, natural twenty. Nice. <laughs> Oh my god, yay. So that's a 25 to hit. Um, How do you do? I do max damage roll plus your roll. So whatever this your is... maximum is that you could It'd possibly get with that spell. Plus yeah, your give, roll. Me a, give me a second. Thank god. Thank god. You gotta celebrate lot. those natural 20s, right? Give me what I need. Okay. Uh, Well. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Um. Okay, so it is thunder damage. Okay. And he takes forty-two points of damage. So you chaos bolt that emits from the palm of your hand and flies across and you see the it kind of lights up the the room that you're in as it flies across and it just poof, right into the chest of the scarecrow and you see the burlap sack disintegrate and the hay just kind of turn to embers everywhere and the torso falls down with a hole through it shit we needed that good job Shiloh but it's dead. I was hoping I would roll the same number on the d8s because then it would have jumped to something else as well but maybe next time <laughs> uh, that's all i got okay that's, that's, that's all, all you she need got. <laughs> uh that brings us to echo Ooh, neat okay so when that one falls there's one standing behind it correct yep uh i am going to cast chromatic orb at that one all oh, right shit. fire damage Ooh, 19 on the die. That's plus six, I believe. So also a 25. Nice, that hits. <laughs> and that's going to be three dates. There it is. Uh, all right, so it's going to be 14. Yeah, so just 14 fire damage. All right. Math. Math. Okay, so you cast that chromatic orb and this shiny orb just and then boom, splatters on it like liquid mercury and then just catches fire and starts to burn through the fleshy bits on the torso and begins to ignite some of the straw and the burlap sack kind of lifts up and starts to float from the heat and then kind of lands down on the ground as the straw flies down to the floor and that torso just kind of Plops. Nice. <laughs> Happy bird noise. Uh, that brings us to Ivan, and there is currently only one scarecrow, and that is through the bonfire in front of you. Yeah, that dick. Um, <laughs> you would have enough movement to go around the front door. It's not that far to go around the front door and out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take my potion <laughs> or I die. Because I cannot take another hit. I cannot take another hit. Uh, would you have action? to ask yourself, would Ivan be smart enough to do that? Yeah, yes, Ivan likes would. living. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, he likes living. <laughs> like, is it a bonus action or is it an action? This, this matters. It is a bonus action to take. Okay. Out. And plus two. Uh, for nine. Yeah, I, that seems like I can let take me, at least one. Hit. Let me clarify that. It is a bonus action because it was a donated health potion. Okay. Cool. That's neat. Ugh. Okay, cool. You hear that, guys? Help us out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Everyone else seems to be fine like 99% of the time. <laughs> no, no, we, we, we had to save Shiloh once, remember? That's true. Yeah, it wasn't me that time. He just runs out there and he's going to take out his uh, peacemaker. Which is his uh, sharp bladed one, and he's just gonna hack that bitch! Alright. <clears throat> Roll your attack. 17. 
17 does hit, yes. All right, that's max damage. That's nine. That's enough to do it. So you slice this torso in half, and it just kind of slides, and the burlap sack falls down, and the hay is just kind of stuffing out of it. And uh, that that crit earlier was only slightly overkill. (laughs) Yeah, you guys were just a bit overkill. I helped. (laughs) And you're out of combat. Uh, Oh, really? How many was that? That was three. Three. That was three. Where did the other three go? Oh, we're going to have to find out. I thought that was four. No, that would be Because I hit one. No. There was one at the door. The one that... uh, Echo just hit, and the one that Ivan just dealt with. Well, I hit one as soon as I opened the that door. That was the same one that you crit. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. That you evaporated. Cool. Cool. Yes, because I am amazing. Uh, we're missing two scarecrows, guys. Three. Vex is going to come out and be like, that Damn was it. close. <laughs> we're missing- Zax. Three. Yes, I pick up with the sacks that I can pick up that weren't eviscerated. You only Who's lost one. is that? And Joe, I don't know if you is know, but you pocket that gold. I was waiting for you to pocket that gold. <laughs> I just assumed. Are you attempting yeah. to do that while nobody saw you doing that? Oh, no, or just or earlier. just picking it up? Yeah, I don't think okay. you heard me because I just said. Okay. I grabbed it earlier. Yeah, you grabbed that uh, coin. Are you doing anything with the clothing that's in there? Um, no, I'll leave it for now. Okay. Take the clothing, man. Is okay, it, I'll grab it. Is it still clothing. raining? <laughs> okay. It's nice clothes. You pick up the uh, the outfit, and underneath the, the silken, like, gold filigree is a dress. It's a white dress. And as you lift it up, you can see that it's a very nice, ornate lace wedding dress. Shiloh, will this fit you? I walk into the room and automatically go, who am I marrying? Also, Joe, would it fit me? <laughs> no. No, it's for a much smaller, smaller person than me. Vex just goes, puts it in her bag. As you're going to put it in your bag, you notice that it probably might fit Ivan. Yay! I get to be one of the girls! What the world is this? Um, is it still raining outside? The, the rain, rain had stopped. stopped, yep. Has the sun come out? It, no, the sun has not come out, but the dark, luminous cloud has dissipated. I'm gonna check on the man again. How are you checking? Are you just, like, poking at him, or? I'm, like, shaking him. Okay. You kind of shake him, and as you're shaking him, he feels a little bit more stiff than he did before. Oh god, I killed him. Who was this guy? Rago's setting in. <laughs> Can I look at him just like make sure he was human? Roll an investigation check. I was ever gotta add second win. 25. Yeah. He looks uh no. he looks fairly human. Okay. Um, he looks dirty and he looks old and wrinkly. Um, and as you're kind of looking around, and you do notice there are two scars on his the right side of his neck, wow. just kind of right where the neck and the Ooh. shoulder meet. They almost look like snake bites. Ah, yeah. Uh huh. Cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he has like human ears and stuff. Human ears. Okay. I am keeping an eye out for the other three scarecrows that might show their ugly mugs. Perhaps we should go and investigate before they come to us. Uh, Echo mimics that dark chuckle that we heard outside the door. I just look at her and I'm like... Where? Well, the cloud is gone, and if we can just assume that he came with the cloud, then he is no longer here. I thought that and, was... and he is toying with us. Welcome to Barovia. Barovia. <laughs> Has eyes and ears everywhere. That's why you shouldn't say his name. I did it that time! <laughs> I, yeah, but you did a lot last time. 
Copy hops up and down. Are we going to go investigate and continue to find these? Well, we have some options. Copy. Wait mm-hmm. until the night so that they come back? No, copy, no, no, no. Copy, copy. No, that's I, I, that is an option, but I also meant that we could either go into the creepy basement that the old man was sleeping on top of, or we could go... Vex, you would note that that creepy basement was just literally a five by five mud pit underneath the bed. Okay, it was just a mud pit, Shiloh. It's only for hiding. Are you, you didn't see anything down there? No. Okay. Well, there's no way of leaving the house from there. Maybe, maybe it is a um, how secret? do you say um, a runaway hole? No, I think it's just <laughs> to hide. But then investigate. Okay. Someone needs to watch the door. I'll watch the door. I <laughs> just kind of like rubs his chest like Mike? I think it would probably be better if you do yes you guys seem to be able to handle a lot of stuff he goes, goes, he goes towards Aww. the back just all butt hurt <laughs> can I jump can it, is it like a like do I have to climb down or can I there's a ladder in? in there but you could jump down it's only I'm about a five foot hole it's five yeah. by five by five it's just so you jump in and you splash. There's about an inch and a half of water sitting at the bottom and you just kind of and your feet kind of sink in about half an inch into this muck at the bottom. I told you. And it smells <laughs> musty and nasty. Like mm. stale mud, muck, stagnant water. Why did they have a lock on it? This place is very odd. I do not understand why you would have a hiding hole in the mud. You could get pneumonia. Or that breathing thing where you're like (gasps) all the time, you know? I'm going to send Copy to go find the scarecrows. Okay. So you send Copy out. Are you using the eyes or are you just scouting? At first, I am. I'm gonna do a, a couple like concentric circles around the um, the house as far as I can go, uh, looking through Copy's eyes. And if I don't see them, then I'll send Copy to finish scouting. Okay. So you send Copy up, and as Copy begins to circle around, as Copy comes around to the southern side of the house, the horses are missing. That's a dick. <clears throat> But other than that, as you circle around a couple times as copy, uh, you don't see any scarecrows. Not even out in the fields? Nope. Other than the two that were beheaded that are still there. Well, five out of eight's not terrible. (laughs) We go back, we fixed it! (laughs) That's usual. <laughs> is this like area is so it's just like a shaft? There's like no it's not like an underhouse crawl. It's just a five foot by five foot by five foot mud hole. A mud hole? How is the mud It's like somebody dug a hole, like they pulled up the uh planks the and mm-hmm. dug a five foot by five foot by five foot hole underneath the house. And then put a trap door there. Like, is it his shithole? But then why yeah, would he that's have what to I was, yeah, for it? Yeah, but, like that's what I'm thinking of at this point. But like, why was it? It's to it's to hide in. Just gonna climb out. I'm gonna get in. This the worst right storm hole. Um, <laughs> okay. I bring back copy and write down and show to everyone. No scarecrows. Horse is gone. What? <laughs> what is Copy's uh, visual range? It doesn't have night vision or dark vision. I know that. Okay, well, it's it's daytime in Barovia. So God, it's not... I have too many D and D Beyond tabs pulled up right now. <laughs> uh, I think a it's a raven, right? Yeah, it's a raven. 
every time I find myself looking at Braven because there's one more thing. That, oh, nope, I don't want the art. Beautiful art. I don't want the art. Uh, it has a passive perception of 13. Uh, I guess it's just whatever the typical uh, visual range is, like what, okay. 60, 120 feet, something like that? Well, being up high, it, it'd probably see a little further than that, you know, depending mm -hmm. on how high up and the elevation and all that. Um, so as Copy's flying around and notices the horses are gone and kind of recirculating, Copy doesn't see any uh, scarecrows, but in the southern, just past the, the wood front, uh, the tree line that you saw on the uh, north side of the clearings where Vex had pointed out the green sparkle, about mm. 30 feet into the tree line, there's a clearing and there's a tower that's about 50 feet tall. And made it's, of... It's made of stone and thatch roofed. Any, like, in weird markings about it? Indications about it? Not from this distance. Copy can see that the tower is there. It can see that it's in uh, decent repair. It's not, like, falling apart. It's not ruin. It's a physical building uh, made of stone with a thatch roof that stands about 50 feet. It's a 10-foot by 10-foot tower. I'm going to... I know it's further out than I can see, but I'm going to send Copy just to check it out. Okay. So you're sending, you're kind of pulling your vision back and sending copy out to scout mm -hmm. it. Okay. As all of this is happening, I am uh, studying the runes that I found and trying to remember like the burning village and the, the symbol in blood that I'm trying to remember what happened after that. Okay. So you focus in on that and you're, you're concentrating and that memory, you can discern that that's a memory that you have now. That memory sits fresh in your mind like you recall being present, kind of laying back on, on your ass, kind of lay, looking up and seeing this ritual symbol made of blood dripping down a wall. The wall is on fire, the ceiling is on fire, and you get the sense of panic and nervousness but that's about the only thing that you can recall. Everything after that is just lost to your amnesia. Okay. I really need to add some WD-40 to this chair. Wow. I'm just going <laughs> to go outside and see if he can see any tracks. Okay. It's fairly obvious once you get around to the side where the horses are, the horses left a lot of tracks and they seem to have taken off in f all four different directions. They've just pff, scattered. Well, I hope they are all right. Any scarecrowy tracks? Like poles, I Roll suppose? <laughs> Roll a survival check. Pole holes? <laughs> <laughs> like pogo hop. stick. Yeah, pogo. just like the, the one yeah. in How is Moving Castle or something. <laughs> Thinking a 15. <laughs> uh, you do see, actually, you see several, uh, they, they're not like holes, but they're like drag marks that looks like somebody was dragging a stick along the ground that seem to head north along the, uh, the trail that you're at or that you were following through the clearing into the tr tree line to the north. Oh. Oops. Okay. So, guys, uh, <laughs> listen, uh, the tracks went north, and um, maybe they're going to go kill more people. Or maybe not. Well, um, yeah, we, uh, so the horses are um, also gone. So, you know, uh, I'm glad, you know, because... Uh, <laughs> And want them to die or be scarecrowed did turn into the crow the, you know what i mean we should probably just leave and well we should well i should probably bury this guy and then we should leave well what if he's not dead but he's dead i i, I did the paper thing 
We have done many things to try and wake this man up. I feel like he's probably just dead. Well, there's already a hole. Um, that's true. Um, uh, no, no, we Joe, should bury him properly. Is is the symbol above the 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 door the um the trap, trap door? door? Mm-hmm. Yeah, is that the same protection <coughs> symbol or is it a different symbol? It's the same protection symbol. Okay. Okay. And it does seem to be ha- uh, drawn in haste, like it's not as ornate and and particular as the one in the front. Okay. Uh, okay. Follow? No. Yeah. I'm gonna go bury them, so I'm just gonna maybe just a shallow grave and we can back oh. later. What? In the hole? No! No, no, no. No, that's... No. I'm gonna drip just some holy water on this guy. We should say some words. Just and maybe just, I dig the hole just, just a like little bit deeper. Anointing yes. him a bit. <laughs> just see what happens. As you touch the holy water to the skin of this thing, it begins to sizzle. <sighs> follow, follow, follow. Hole. Put him in the hole. Lock him up. Hole. Follow. I'm dead. Oh, what? I uh, just. Uh, I'm digging the hole just like a foot deeper. No, no, I'm don't worry sick. about it, Ivan. It's a. This is a monster creature thing. Dexel just like push his body into the. <laughs> yeah, you roll it in and it's a and splash. And then I close it. Ooh. Is there a lock on it? You locked. You unlocked it. Yep. <laughs> okay, I'll lock it back up. Okay. Come on. That's gonna be fun. Um, uh, I uh, can I um try and make the symbol a little better so that maybe it actually does what it's supposed to. <laughs> you have the ink uh, yeah. on the counter and a quill, so you can definitely take some time to do that. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm gonna try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm gonna do that to make this protection symbol. Maybe keep his ass in there. <laughs> okay. So you take about 10 minutes to finish the protection symbol and kind of fill it out a little bit better and make it look a little neater. I'm just going to sit outside on the porch. Just just not a happy job. Not a happy boy. I haven't had such a bad time since coming to Barovia. Just We're had all a bad having time. a bad time. We just... Everyone's I, having a hard time. I mean, I've got like five books since we got here, so I'm pretty happy. Um... Shiloh does want to look at the books eventually, you greedy butt. <laughs> I also like to read. <laughs> yeah, but I can learn spells from it, so. You have diaries and shit like that. Let me read I want to read the diary. Just for the drama. Okay. Well, I've got, first priority is Ivan's book. I have yeah. a list. I have a list of books that I'm working on right now. Yeah, share the other ones, you psycho. <laughs> Evan's gonna take out his uh, nut zinger, and he's just gonna start just just throwing, <laughs> throwing them randomly just to pass the time into like the tree line. That's a slingshot, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, no, it's a nut slinger. Yeah, you find there's lots of little pebbles, so you're just able to kind of grab one and. Here. <laughs> oh. Follow. Let's go. Follow. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. Okay. So you all kind of get around and get ready and uh, meet Ivan out on the porch and begin walking down the uh, the trail towards the tree line. Wait, are we going north or south? North. Okay. I did say down, but <laughs> we're walking north <laughs> towards the tree line. About 10 minutes of walking you reach the tree line and you can see that there's this almost unnatural darkness that sets into this forest Uh, all the light that that could come into this forest seems to be blocked by the canopy of the trees and it's a pretty dense thicket but as you're walking up towards the uh 
the tree lines, the tall grass and the shrubbery just seems to kind of bend open, creating this very small single file, maybe foot wide path. And it just kind of opens up about a foot deep into the forest. That's not natural. I step in. At this Barovia, point, not natural. Copy comes back and lands on your shoulder. Huh? And in your head, you hear Copy saying, Three women. Tall. Scraggly. Massive claws. I'm not going to mention the tower. Just not. Good okay. idea. Just not going to mention the tower. Yay. <clears throat> Is the trail going into this area? The trail only opened up for about a foot into the thing, and it just kind of... I mean, the the tracks. The tracks end at the tree lines. Like, where this trail is kind of ends at the tree line. <laughs> I was immediately looking up, like, what the fuck? <laughs> They're gone. They just... They may have continued into the forest, but we can't see it because of the overgrowth. I'm going to step onto that path and see what happens. As your foot steps onto the path, another foot and a half of trail kind of exposes itself. It's like a flower blooming. The shrubs and the tall grass just bend enough to create a trail. That's not natural. But it's the only lead we got. Um, I So I can see 120 feet in darkness. Mm hmm do I see anything within that range? You see trees and shrubs, and it looks very wild, okay. um, like it's untouched. I am going to put one foot off that trail and into the wild. See what happens. Yeah, your foot leaves the uh, pathway, and where you were standing kind of begins to kind of close up. Hmm. I put I... my foot back. <laughs> Wait. No, it takes a rock and like chucks it. The rock flies in and. It does not work for rocks. No. Picks up a twig. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, I'm gonna start just walking on the trail that had been opening up. Yeah, as you step back on, the trail in front of you opens up, and if you continue to follow, it opens up about a foot in front of you, so you mm -hmm. can see where you can step next, but if you step off of that, it begins to close, close. again. So it's okay. almost like the forest is railroading you in a direction. Interesting okay. choice of words! Yeah, it's just a weird choice of words. Hmm. That, okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Should we go down this path? And if we do, we should... Um... Pulls out all reliable. Follow. You know, mark mark the path, maybe. Yeah. I don't have arcane mark, so. I have a knife. I don't think it's a cantrip in this game. I think it's only a cantrip in Pathfinder. He's just going to put, like, etching on the trees and stuff like that as he kind of, yeah. Okay. So you yeah. follow this trail, and as, like I said, whoever's leading, it opens up about a foot in front of you, and it stays open for the, the remainder of the group, and then about a foot behind the last person, the, everything seems to close back up. Ivan, you'll notice that the marks on the trees that you're making are staying there, they're visible. Um, and you're kind of following this path until it opens up into a clearing, revealing a 50-foot tower made of stone. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't scream, but I make the, I make the noise under my breath. And in this clearing, in front of the tower, you see several pieces of uh, timber, fallen trees that have been shaped and formed into uh, crosses. And you see clothing scattered all around and a stack of burlap sacks. Sacks. 
sex. I'm just gonna say that maybe they probably made them. That seems that seems like so this is where they live. Ivan. Women. <clears throat> Copy. Scout. <clears throat> okay, there's <clears throat> up there. Sex. The scarecrows Sex. are up there. I summon mage hand and I want to send it over to try and grab as many of those sacks as I can and bring them back. Oh, so instead of fighting, we just take those and go back to town to say we <laughs> took the fuck out. Again. Get the fuck out. Just like okay. the wolves. Okay. So your skeletal hand kind of just floats out and grabs there's about eight sacks that the hand is able to kind of just grab a hold of and how many are in the pile? Is it like a big pile? There's a pretty big pile of burlap sacks. It's probably about 50 of them just stacked up on top of each other. Set the rest on fire? Yes. On yeah. fire? Yeah. Uh, I, I like motion for you guys to back up into the back up back towards the trail that we were on. Okay. And as we like, from as far back on the trail and as I can, I cast uh, create bonfire on the uh, pile of burlap sacks okay yeah <laughs> and they light up and the flame kind of erupts into a massive bonfire and the color of this uh immediately turns into this blue and then like a really bright light blue and then it changes to a deep dark purple and you see these like sparkles just kind of coming off the fire i motion for us to go uh, but they could potentially. I've been. But the but but I don't feel right about this. It is lying. From the top Hurt. of the tower, you hear a deathly banshee scream and screech. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you run back through this trail, and it again it opens up for you. Uh, and opens up that foot wide trail and leads you back and follows the same trail that you came through. And as you leave the forest into that trail and the clearings, you see one of the horses kind of running across the clearing in the distance. I can't whistle in real life, but Ivan's gonna whistle. Whistle! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it kind of like you see the ears perk and it like stops and rears up and then it like turns and it just kind of stops moving and it's about a hundred yards uh, into the farther a uh, hundred yards down in the uh, path the makeshift road the trampled grass road I'm gonna keep an eye behind us to make sure that we're not being followed okay <sighs> Okay, so we have these sacks mm -hmm. and whatever that was up there, but it, I don't understand. They could just make more and the problem would not be solved. Sacks. Took sacks. Yes, but the problem is not solved. This Burned. Is, they could probably make more of the sacks and the more D of the scarecrows and the problem would not be solved. This is just, um, uh, you know the word, uh, the, the bandage? Yes, that's, it is a bandage for the Ivan. wound. Hurts. You need bandage. I, 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 I'm fine. I just, but a flesh wound. I, I, I pull out a notebook really quick and I scribble down and just show it to him. Just We may not be strong enough to fight that off right now. Uh, you guys seem pretty strong. <laughs> Are you guys not tired? <laughs> Maybe I need a dress. <laughs> of course it. I need a corset. It's the only thing I have that you, you guys have. I don't have that. Okay. 
Um, Grezik. Grezik. <sighs> yeah, uh, I guess we could go back. Um, Mm. Head towards Kresik. Okay. So you uh, follow down this uh, this trampled path, and you get to where the horse is at, and the horse is kind of like glad to see you. If a horse can express gratitude, it is expressing <laughs> a happy <laughs> face. Aww. Um And you take this horse back with you, and you get back to the gates of Kresik, and uh, the guard recognizes you, and oh. Come on in, come on in. I want to say to Ivan on our way back, I say back in his own voice, retreat is always an option. Live to fight another day. Yeah, I suppose. But we just... do need to let them know this. It's still a danger. And so are the wolves. Live to fight another day. Well, they might not, so they should know. As you uh, as you finish up that conversation, you get to the front door and the guard is like, oh good good come on in come on in and they, you hear the clacking and the doors open and as the doors open you hear this clamoring this uh, shouting and yelling um, and the town looks sort of panicked. Uh, there's a lot of running back and forth, um, specifically to a building uh, that seems to have been kind of misused or not used very often that's now getting a lot of attention um, and you see a plus sign hanging on a uh, a sign hanging off of the door uh, uh, there seem to be a lot of people uh, running into that building whenever I whenever we walk in I'll look at the garden and go what's happening oh we are so glad to have you, have you back a lot of our men did not make it back from the hunt I <laughs> Why didn't they make it back? Well, uh, Dimitri will want to speak with you, uh. <laughs> Shit. They went hunting up north and, uh, we lost quite a few men. Five of them did not come back at all. Three of them in pieces. The other two are. Well, we'll see if they make it. We're gonna get arrested, guys. We're gonna get arrested in Barovia. <laughs> I'm so not okay. Okay. Where okay. is he? I mean, there's plenty of time to read in prison. <laughs> not wrong. I'm in prison. <laughs> okay, alright. So the okay. door's shut behind you. And the guard leads you to uh, the town hall where you had met with Dimitri earlier. And uh, leads you to the door and knocks on the door and you hear Dimitri, yes, bring them in, bring them in. <laughs> and he's kind of looming over his desk and he looks very distraught. Oh, we did a bad thing? Did you handle the possessions in the south? Hold up, like, what we have, we had eight that we got from the tower. The pile. Yep, and, and then, then we three. had five from the others yeah, that we five. killed. Well, yeah, because you yeah. missed, yeah, the one, and then... so Because you killed the three, and then the other three were missing, so you only had the two, so eight, Correct. nine, ten. So you have a total of ten of them. Yeah. Oh. No, 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 because you, you took two from the two that were beheaded. Yeah. Took two, and That's then we right. killed three. About those two. So we have yeah. thirteen. Yep. No, no, one of them uh, got caught on fire. Yeah. And was... Twelve. Dis- Okay, yeah, so, 12, so we have yeah. 12. Yeah. I forgot yeah, about yeah. the two that you had beheaded. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. yes, you have 12. And you present him with um, 12 burlap sacks. He says, oh, wonderful, wonderful. It seems the uh, the wolves are back in the north. We've lost quite oh, a few no. men, and I, I must deal with that. Uh, I don't know if the scarecrow thing is completely finished. Tower. We <laughs> ran into a tower... And there were some, a screeching thing up, up high. I don't know if the four of us are powerful enough to handle whatever was up there. Three women. Ah. What? And I mimic, I mimic the scream. Like, quietly, because we're inside. Yeah. 
But I'm yeah. going to make the scream. He kind of shudders. Oh, well, that's uh, disconcerting news, but you are obviously doing your best. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your help. <laughs> You may stay the night here. You are trying to help Grezik, and I appreciate your help. I must attend to the wounded and, and their families, if you excuse me. Do, do you want some help? How can you help? I don't know. I know magic. Do you know how to heal? No, but I'm okay at medicine. I could maybe help patch some people up. You know how to sew limbs? Oh, I could definitely try. Very good. Follow me. Hey. He's going to walk out of the room uh, and lead Shiloh and anybody else that's following Shiloh and him to the clinic. And as you walk into the clinic, uh, there are several tables that have been prepared and they're just covered in blood and body pieces. And you see somebody trying to kind of reassemble like the pieces of the body to kind of make sense to try and identify which person it is. There are two people on beds that have massive slash wounds um, and they're just kind of bleeding out and people are attending, trying to stop the bleeding. And it's just, it's very chaotic. Uh, I need you to roll a medicine check to see how many people you can attempt to, to help. Okay. Vex, what are you doing at this point? I am going to go um, to the pub. Okay. Ivan? I'm going to try and help. Uh, Probably not very well. Okay. If you're following with Shiloh and, and Dimitri, then I need you to also roll the medicine. Echo, what are you doing? Well, I don't think, well, I mean, Vex is going to the pub, not to the redheaded guys. So I'm going to follow with Vex and when things get kind of settled down, go back to trying to finish translating this book. Okay. Work my way down the list. (laughs) It's important things. Okay. So what did you roll on your medicine, Shiloh and Ivan? I rolled a 14. Okay. I also rolled a 14. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, so between the two of you and all the people in the hospital, you're able to save the two people that were massively wounded um, and bleeding out. Um, but the obviously the body parts, you know, dismembered people, they're, they're gone. Um, but the two people that were bleeding out that they brought back that had those massive wounds, you're able to stop the bleeding. Um, they're currently unconscious in bed healing, but they are stabilized. And it takes you probably about two hours of that, of helping around to, to kind of get them to a place where you feel, everybody feels that they are comfortably stable. Okay. Uh, so we're going to come back to you two as Vex and Echo are in the pub. Echo's kind of working on translating. Vex, uh, the bartender, welcomes you back. Would, what would you like to drink? You're muted. Muted. Sorry. Right. I'll take some ale and i think we're gonna get our stuff in we're gonna stay somewhere else tonight barry oh yes. yeah i'll yeah. go get barry and the stuff oh barry's not up there anymore is that what you call the owl bear cub uh where is he barry he's in the stables oh huh. huh. okay i would not let him stay up in that room i'm sorry i'm surprised he got him out <laughs> right <laughs> oh it was easy i just took the turkey jerky and Dangled it in front of him. <laughs> Made a trail. <laughs> <laughs> There's about ten pounds left. He's a hungry baby. Hungry so let's babe. all get comfortable at this, um, at my new friend's house. <laughs> Is that the stable that he means? The the guy that you're going to, the redhead, uh, the other mm-hmm. Ivan, worked at the stables. Okay, so he's there where Barry is. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Same place. Cool, cool. So I'm going to go to his house. Okay. So you guys uh, 
get to the stables and and Barry is kind of Barry Kodak is running around chasing some of the uh horses just playfully he's not like trying to eat them but yeah it's just kind of like still going to get kicked mm -hmm. or a horse around. is going to break its leg like <laughs> Jesus there's like what is this <laughs> what is this and uh, you see Ivan is brushing a horse in one of the stable stalls and Oh, my friend Vex, welcome back. I'm so glad you made it back today. It's been quite a uh, interesting day. Yeah, it's been interesting out there as well. What happened here? Oh, well, this morning started out wonderful. You know, good news and all, but then... Uh, about four o'clock this afternoon, the bells were ringing. They were bringing in bodies. It was, it was a mess. Apparently... <laughs> There are some more wolves up north that just decimated our hunters. Mm. What, do I, do I have something on my teeth? No. Oh, good. There must have been more than we thought. Oh, it is likely that there is probably a den somewhere. Well, uh, can we still stay at your house? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Let me, uh, let me finish up with this horse and then we will head head home okay and he uh, kind of finishes up it takes him about two minutes to kind of finish up he rushes through and finishes up brushing the horse and puts his tools away and come follow me come do you've mentioned that you have friends uh, it's nice to meet uh this is echo yeah. it's nice to meet you um never seen anyone like you before Echo's cool. You're still welcome to stay at my house, of course, but forgive me Echo's for staring. Cool. <laughs> I say it in <laughs> Vex's voice, Echo's cool. Oh, that, that is a fascinating trick. Can you teach me how to do that? Can you teach me how to do that? Oh, he just <laughs> thrilled and he's giggling. <laughs> I'm here all night, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have more friends, right? Yeah, they're helping with the wounded. I have oh. a... That's very nice. I have an easy stomach, so I couldn't help. Yes, I. that's why I stay here at the stables and was not helping. I cannot stand the sight of blood. <laughs> Echo just holds up the book. Book? Echo likes to read. She needs a place, or they need a place to read their book. Oh, yes, yes, okay. Fair enough. Um, follow me. Follow me. And he leads you out of the stable and down towards the road. Uh, Shiloh and Ivan, you finish up uh, as the sun is beginning to set. <clears throat> Ivan, we have to go find our friends so that we can find the place we're staying tonight. Yeah. Um... Do you think they're not going to be able to eat because of our I don't, I don't know. We 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 were truthful about the crow or the scarecrows. Yes, but hopefully they can start growing crops again out there maybe. Maybe it'll take the whatever those things were to bring back more scarecrows to kill people. Maybe we'll get powerful enough to actually take on more wolves. But they had our cubs too, so. Okay, I um, should probably do something. What do you want to do? I don't know. Hunt, maybe? You can't do that after dark, at least. But I should go in the morning. At least we should bring back something. Or... Okay. Uh, we should make sure everyone has some food to eat. And if not, we can um, we'll figure it out from there. I'll meet you by uh, by the 
right, we have to pick up Barry. Shit, we forgot about Barry. <sighs> oh, well, I mean, the other two went back to the tavern, so maybe they have Barry. What if they didn't feed him? I'm I'm sure they fed him. We left. Let's go. Him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. As you walk out of the clinic, you see the sun. It's about a quarter sun uh, above the horizon, and you hear a very loud and deafening bong, bong, kind of emanate from this tower or this castle in the distance. That four hundred foot away that kind oh, of looms over up on the mountain. Yes, up on the mountain kind of resonates down and uh, you catch a glimpse of Barry Kodak kind of prancing down the main street to the left, kind of ducks on a side road to the left and you see Shiloh's or uh, Echo's kind of like blue feather just kind of catch a glimpse of the tall blue feather as it it looks like they, they have Barry. So we heard the bells too. Yes. It was okay. very loud, resonating. It just kind of echoed across Kresik. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ivan, go ahead and go. I'll be right there. Where are you going? I want to go see that shrine again. Which shrine? The oh, pavilion. Oh, right. yeah. I will go with you. You don't, um, you don't have to. It's kind of on the way. Because it's okay. in the center of town, and your main road follows, and then you saw them kind of. Duck. I will stop by the butcher and okay. make sure that they do have food. Okay. Okay. As you're walking past the butcher shop, you notice that it's all shut up, but you see one of the cleavers kind of set into a big hunk of meat with some bones sticking out. So it looks like he's probably got some stuff. Thank you. Okay. It's just hanging out there. He didn't even finish what he's doing. <laughs> it looked like he was in the middle of something and just stopped and everything shuttered up. Uh, surprised these people don't get sick. This My guy's not be, professional. Jesus. My mother would be upset. <laughs> As you pass the uh, the gazebo next to the well, what would you like to do? Um, I'm gonna go in. Is the bowl still full of water? It is. Okay. Um, I am gonna do something that Shiloh has probably never done before, but she's gonna say a little prayer and then leave. Okay. Aww. Yeah. As you're bent over, kind of looking into this bowl, and you're kind of looking at the symbol and, and praying, you get a warm feeling. You're not sure if that's direct you know causation but uh you do you get a, a warm feeling in the center of your chest that just kind of sits there and then i go back i go to the stable man's house ivan <laughs> yep okay so you head back and you just in time as you're going to the left you see uh Echo's blue feather kind of go into a door. Uh, Vex... I've been reduced to a blue feather. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most outstanding feature that they just, you know, catches their on, attention. On a human-sized bird, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not bitter about that at all, no, are I'm you? Kidding, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you see that, and uh, Vex, Echo... You're uh, welcomed into this. It's a, it's a pretty nice cottage-sized house. It's two stories, so there's a staircase on the left-hand side immediately when you come in. And then there's a uh, living room. And then in the back, there's a dining room kitchen kind of area. And then you can assume that the bedrooms are probably upstairs. Uh, there's some commotion going on upstairs. Sounds like some like little... Like running back and forth. Children. Yeah, good luck trying to get that child there in bed. And uh, Ivan and Shiloh, you get to the door and you knock on the door and uh, a red-headed individual opens the door. Ah, yes, yes, you must be Vex's friends. Come, come, come in. Welcome to my home. You'll have to excuse me. I have to attend to my wife. She is pregnant and do any time, but you're more than welcome to crash down here. Thank you. 
appreciate the Barovian slang of crash. <laughs> yes. I'm what um, the kids call hip. hip. Jesus. <laughs> I'm what the kids call hip. <laughs> I am pissed. Oh, okay. Oh, no. uh, Echo is going to find somewhere, dining table, couch, corner next to the hearth, I don't care, and set up and keep working. Okay. So Echo is, is intently reading. and uh, uh, You see Shiloh grabby hands for one of the other books. <laughs> and I'm going to look at the diary. Echo, I need that diary. <laughs> Show your damn books, come on! These are our books. We all found them. So what's in here? I'm not saying I'm touching anything. I'm just saying, but if I was, I would want to know what I'm touching. <laughs> it's a very nice, basic house. Uh, there's a mantle above the fire. There's some knickknacks up there. They don't look like they're valuable, just maybe sentimental, like decoration. Uh, the kitchen is furnished with utensils, pots, pans. Um, there's dead pheasants hanging from a rack they look like they're ready to be prepared. They're freshly caught um, or bought. You're not sure which, but um, the fireplace is kind of roaring. Uh, and you can hear the footsteps kind of running upstairs. It, it seems Barry warm and pleasant. Yes, you do see Barry. Barry is kind of <laughs> curled up next to the fireplace and kind of just, you can see the chest kind of <laughs> rising and lowering. Our our sweet boy. Um, cool. Uh, does it look like dinners? So dinner's not been made. No. Okay. I'm Chef Ivan. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> About to make the best fucking meal this family's ever had. Oh my God. Viking style. Yeah. You find all the stuff that you need to prepare a meal in that kitchen. Um, it doesn't look like he's doing too bad. He's He's got some spices and salts and peppers and make a cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh it's it's uh, Breath of the Wild the chick, 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 when you're cooking in the, the pot. <laughs> uh, uh you will notate that this the inside of this house is probably the warmest and most comfortable place that you've seen since being here. It almost feels kind of like it would fit in with that nice, serene forest area that you were in before hmm. better than it fits in with Kresik hmm. as a whole. What an echo. echo is going to very slowly and reluctantly pull out the spell tome and hand it to Shiloh. And pull out the little di diary and hand it to Vex. And I'll go back. It back. Well, I could take the book about vampires. We have that one. Trade. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that I had that one, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was solely focused on the three books that I have right this second that I'm more intent on because that spell time is going to give me spells. No, I would never take that from you because she doesn't need I, it. I thought she wanted to freaking read it or something. I know you can't learn the spells, but I mean, yeah, yeah. it's fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. Bookworm says reading books is fun. Yeah. Fair enough. Vex is going to look around for any wine or mead or something to drink while she's reading. In the kitchen, there is a cask that has been tapped it doesn't have any identifying marks on it, but it does look like it's some sort of alcoholic drink. Is redheaded Ivan around? He went upstairs. Oh, okay. Take care of his wife. <laughs> had your kids, had your wife. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Vex, could and you had your me? husband, because Strahd's coming. Could you hand me the pepper over there while you're at it? Sure. Mm -hmm. and I'll toss it too. Mm -hmm. um, what are you making? Mm -hmm. Dinner. That is the most mom answer ever. <laughs> or dad. I've said that before, too. Uh, is there an apron? Please tell me there's an apron. There's a, the a, pair of, a pair of coveralls. You can just kind of drape them over. Yep. <laughs> um, I'm specifically looking for a few things in this book. 
Um, I'm looking for the symbol of like the sun god to see if it's actually in this one. And I'm looking for the protection rune. You're looking for that in the vampire book? Might as well. Who knows? Okay. So you're kind of flipping through it. Uh, You're taking some time to kind of read through the book and looking Mm -hmm. specifically for those runes. Vex, you're reading the diary. Yeah, I'm kind of um, leafing through it just to kind of see if maybe I can get any clues to the guy in the hole. Okay. Um, It doesn't really mention a guy until the very end. Um, Most of the book references uh, Demiria. Spell that? D-E-M-E-I-R-A. E-R-A. In like a male or a female context? It really, it, it's just naming the person. The, oh, okay. the pronouns used are she around that name, but it's, it's kind of hard because it, it references that person by name specifically a lot. Mm. In a positive or negative way? In a very positive way. Okay. Um, and then towards the uh, towards the middle of the book, it stops kind of mentioning that person. Um, and then, as you read further through the book, like like I said, this is hundreds of years. It's a pretty thick tome, and you're kind of just perusing through. I'd say about three quarters of the way through, uh, it mentions uh, another individual. Um, what was the name? What was the name? Oh, there it is. Okay. I like playing the game. Is he going to say the name? I think he's going to say. <laughs> so you're kind of brushing through the book, and about three quarters of the way through, uh, it mentions a name, Sergey, in uh, in reference to a very positive light. Like you're getting the point. This this individual that's writing in this journal is smitten with this individual more so than the first part of the book uh, that Demiria was it was more like a uh, family like individual whereas this individual that she's writing about Sergei it's I wouldn't say an infatuation or obsession but a very fond uh, kind of demeanor towards that yeah. <laughs> A blush. <laughs> <laughs> is this writing all the same writing, even though it's hundreds of years? Hmm. Echo. At this point, you have kind of. <laughs> Sorry. <finished. laughs> That's all right. At this point, you've uh, successfully finished. And Ivan. You have performed your dinner. Wait. There are three pheasants fully cooked. Lots of uh, vegetable. He is so proud. Uh, And what you're most proudest of, you kind of present to the group uh, on a platter. There's corn on the cob uh, with some kind of egg uh, marinade that it kind of uh, slathered on top of it. And then like Parmesan cheese and like some chili peppers, chili, crushed chili peppers on top of it. Oh my god, I love elotes! Oh my god, that's legit one of my faves. <laughs> so you present that to the group. And Echo oh. in turn, Echo in turn presents you with the book. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> well, it's dinner I've time, been, so the books should go down. Yeah, but that's your book. I think Echo finished translating it. Oh! Dinner first? <laughs> I, I cannot read and eat at the same time. Well, my dad says I should not read and eat at the same time. Not that it ever came up that often. It actually never came up. He told that to my sisters. No. Eat! I um will bring some food upstairs. Okay. Echo. Eat. 
you should get extra for a good job. <laughs> oh. he, he like gives her his his elote. Oh. Mm. Echo's eating a bird again. Wait a minute. Oh, oh. shit! <laughs> okay, Wait a minute. I notice. Hey, he gave you vegetables and his <laughs> elote. Echo gets very excited and thinks about it and looks at it. Oh, I don't have hands. Pardon me as I Google if ravens are omnivorous. I mean, worms. Do you need help, Ivan? Bugs. Oh, no, I got oh, it. You no, that's eat. You should not eat. what I want to I, do. I, I, I got this. <laughs> oh, okay. Allow me to, um, what is the word? Housemake. Hmm? Oh, oh, okay. He's going to go upstairs with his two plates. Okay. But one has a lot of food on it, just like a mess of food. Oh, duh. Ravens are carrying birds. Okay. I'm an idiot. No, you're not. He's gonna knock on the mean... door with his foot. Uh, okay. yeah. They, uh, Ivan answers the door. Oh! Oh my god, thank you so much! This is, this is so friendly of you! He, uh, and inside you can see a woman laying in the bed, um, and her stomach is massive. Um, she looks like she's due any minute. Oh, I forgot she was pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hope you didn't mind. I, um, I didn't know what you would eat, so I made what I would eat at home with what you had. Oh, no, this is, this is wonderful. What, what do you call these? And he holds up the elote. <laughs> Food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you so much. This is the best. My wife will appreciate this. Um, didn't even didn't even think to have time to make dinner. I thought you did not, so I thought I would make it for you. Uh, if she is still um, hungry, there is more downstairs. There isn't. It is food. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And you hear the most like pain sounding groan come from the bed. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. And he kind of, like, shuts the door. <laughs> okay. Vex, in that coin purse, you find 35 gold pieces. Damn. Okay. <laughs> 32 copper pieces. Three silver pieces and a ring. <laughs> ah. I am going to. Where's Shiloh? I'm right there. <laughs> I'm like, look at this ring. Is it magic? I will take the ring and look it over. Okay. Is it magic? <laughs> <laughs> um, it is a white gold ring. Okay. With black diamonds all the way around a center diamond, which okay. is probably a three carat diamond in the center cut and the princess cut, like the tear shape princess mm -hmm. cut diamond. Um, if you're looking to see if it is magical, you can roll an arcana. Uh, I bet uh, it's the wedding ring. I bet it's the wedding ring with that dress. 18. It is non-magical. Not magical, Vex. Um, Vex but, puts it on. Yeah, it's very pretty. Is there... Is everybody okay? It sounds like there's a cop car or something. I don't hear any cop car. Oh. Not on the side. Oh, okay. Just okay. the voices. <laughs> Parenting. Just new it's fine. All right. Uh, yes, it is. It is a very nice. What looks like a wedding ring. Probably worth a pretty penny. 
Yeah. I'm going to tuck it away in one of my pockets. Okay. Ivan? <sighs> Thank you. Echo just <laughs> wiggles proudly. <laughs> okay, I will read it now. Here I go. <laughs> is everybody like watching Ivan? <laughs> no, I think Shiloh is just staring at her food. She hasn't really touched it. Okay. Is yeah. now a good time to say I can't read? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. That would be fucking hilarious. Are you reading it out loud or are you reading it to yourself, Kat? I am going to read it out loud. Please do not make me do that in Ivan's voice. <laughs> no, you can just read it. Read it. Or I can I'm read it, it if you would like me to. It's up to you. Hey, yeah. You do it. <laughs> okay. So Ivan's Ivan... voice comes clear as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ivan reads out loud. I am the ancient, I am the land. My beginnings are lost in the darkness of the past. I was the warrior, I was good and just. I thundered across the land like the wrath of a just god. But the war years and the killing years wore down my soul as the wind wears stone into sand. All goodness slipped from my life. I found my youth and strength gone, and all I had left was death. My army settled in the valley of Barovia and took power over the people in the name of a just god, but with none of a god's grace or justice. I called for my family, long unseated from their ancient thrones, and brought them here to settle in the castle Ravenloft. They came with a younger brother of mine, Sergei. He was handsome and youthful. I hated him for both. She f Ivan flips a page. From the families of the valley, one spirit shone above all others. A rare beauty who was called perfection, joy, and treasure. Her name was Tatiana, and I longed for her to be mine. I loved her with all my heart. I loved her for her youth. I loved her for her joy. But she spurned me. Old one was my name to her, elder and brother also. Her heart went to Sergei. They were betrothed. The date was set. Ivan flips a page. With words, she called me brother, but when I looked into her eyes, they reflected another name, death. It was the death of the aged that she saw in me. She loved her youth and enjoyed it, but I had squandered mine. The death she saw in me turned her from me, and so I came to hate death, my death. My hate is very strong. I would not be called death so soon. I made a pact with Vol. A pact of blood. On the day of the wedding, I killed Sergei, my brother. My pact was sealed with his blood, his divinity. I found Tatiana weeping in the garden east of the chapel. She fled from me. She would not let me explain, and a great anger swelled within me. She had to understand the pact I made for her. I pursued her. Finally, in despair, she flung herself from the walls of Ravenloft, and I watched everything I ever wanted fall from my grasp forever. It was a thousand feet through the mists. No trace of her was ever found. Not even I know her final fate. Arrows from the castle guards pierced me to my soul, but I did not die, nor did I live. I became undead forever. Ivan flips a page. I have studied much since then. Vampire is my new name. I still lust for life and youth, and I curse the living that took them from me. Even the sun is against me. It is the sun and light I fear the most, but little else can harm me now. Even a stake through my heart does not kill me, though it holds me from, from movement. But the sword that cursed sword that Sergei brought, I must dispose of that awful tool. I fear and hate it as much as the sun. Ivan turns a page. Wow, I didn't realize how long this was. <laughs> I have learned much 
too, about this land of Barovia. Ancient are its ways, ancient beyond the knowledge of the simple folk of the valley. Ancient saints dwell in this valley long before my coming, and three hidden fanes still give tribute to their memories. I visited the swamp fane, the forest fane, and the mountain fane, and I claimed their power for my own. Their servants now serve me, and thus I have become the land. Ivan flips a page. I have often hunted for Tatiana. I have even felt her within my grasp, but she escapes me. She taunts me. She taunts me. What will it take to bend her love to me? I now reside far below Ravenloft. I live among the dead and sleep beneath the very stones of this hollow castle of despair. I shall seal shut the walls of the stairs that none may disturb me. Ivan flips another page. Vol has called in her last favor of, her bar of our bargain. I am to bring King Caius to Castle Ravenloft as she also has dealings with him. The transformation to Vampyr was not a smooth one for my king. Vol trigger his bloodlust, and he slew his wife and half his re retinue. One wonders how he can rule in this state, but Vol how bound us both to the day heart. Turns a page. The war has proven to be an interesting distraction. It has been a long time since my death and rebirth that I have felt anything but anguish for my lost Tatiana. But my pride in my troops and our victories on the field has elevated my heart to fight fiercely for the honor of Karnath. Flips another page. Interesting. King Karnath, now known as King Caius I, has resurfaced as the new king, now dubbed King Caius III. Flips one last page. And this last entry is dated two years ago. Betrayal! Chaos must lie in rotted filth in his coffin. How could that bastard surrender? Does he not realize what happened to Sire could happen to us? Ivan closes the book. On the back of the book, Ivan's name is scratched into the leather. Like, what puts it fuck? down on the table and just kind of... Oh, you know what's weird? Is some of those names are in this diary. What Which names? One? Sergei. Sergei. Tatiana. But Sergei is dead. But this was what sounds like it was written by Sergei's brother. And that was written by Tatiana? Fleur, uh, point at the book. Tome of Strahd. Oh, shit, you're right. Okay. What are those books doing in the house? What do you mean? Those books you found in the house? Tatiana. It was Tatiana's diary, maybe? But how did that man get a get a hold of hers? Maybe, maybe she used to live there. Uh, point at Vex. Dress? Yeah, the wedding dress and the uh, ring. There but was also a nice men's suit too, right? Yeah, I'm sure it was their wedding clothes. But how did he find the wedding dress? Did she not disappear in it? Do you think he's one of them, Sergey, or? I don't know if he would be Sergey. Sergey, from what Ivan read, Sergey is dead, and has been for a long time. But maybe that guy is him because. He was dead, but nothing really ever kills him. I don't know. Strahd. Strahd. Dead. Maybe stop saying his name. <laughs> Ivan. Scribble is down in a book. I can only say so many things. <laughs> you could say vampire. We heard that word now. Ivan. 
the book is laying face down with your name kind of etched in it kind of and above your name there's a very faint scratching of some runic symbols like slowly grabs the book again like looks at it hmm I don't remember that being there. Was that there before? It looks like they have been there for many years, but you just never noticed it before. It's Can definitely I... not as prominent as the, the etching of your name, but it looks like it was probably etched and then not etched as, like, as hard. Yeah. Um, Shiloh? Yes? Do you know what this is? I look at the runes. Do I know what they are? Can hand you the the page. I'll take I'll take the page to like. Okay, so compare. Echo hands you the the cipher page, and uh, you kind of compare the runes, and they are for uh, Ferovian, and you kind of translate it, uh, and you can tell Ivan that uh, it translates to my dearest. My dearest. Dearest what? Your name's underneath that, so is it my dearest Ivandor? Who would give me this terrible book? I don't know. Where did you get it? I was with it. You were with it? Uh, I was found in a basket with this book. In the river. What if you're originally from here? I want to flip it open and point to the um to the date that's two years prior. Did you write in this two years ago? No. I I couldn't. I wouldn't know how she writes in this language. Wait, you said this was two years ago? This specific part of it is. <laughs> how where are you flipping to as you're flipping through the book to try to find the last page but again i, I can't read this shit <laughs> okay so you flip to the end and as you're kind of looking at it you start to see runes appearing wait can i can i like more detailed look at this to see how what kind of like magic it might be as you're looking at it you see the runes appearing as if they're being written by some unseen hand i grab the cipher page and start like it's it's almost like it's being written onto the page as we're looking at it mm -hmm. grab the cipher page and i start like trying to read it as it's going at the top it Today's date. Oh, shit. Met the most interesting people. We're gonna start <laughs> recording this. <laughs> A bird man. <laughs> A tall devil. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> A human. Dick! <laughs> and possibly her. Period. Oh, shit! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I will be sure to keep my eyes on them going forward. Oh no. Did they mention an elf? Uh it said it's possibly you. her and I just like look at Vex. And that's where we're going to end this session <laughs> of Barovia Beckons. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh man. See what you've done here. Uh because you requested it, Savannah? What? 
fucking course. beans. <laughs> <laughs> fucking beans. <laughs> All right, let me just uh, write that down in my list of quotes now. Uh, <laughs> ah, fucking beans. Ah, oh, fucking beans. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining us on this episode, this extended episode. We went a little bit over. That's <laughs> fine. A little this bit. Was great. <laughs> Shit got real. <laughs> uh, I ran out of room on my fucking note page, y'all. <laughs> like over here in the margins. Um, be sure to tune in next week at 9 p.m. as we begin episode eight of Brovia Beckons. Uh, inside the house of Ivan Two, and. Uh, <laughs> We'll see where this goes, shall we? That dick um, called me a human. <laughs> that dick called me a tall de devil. That dick misgendered me. <laughs> I'm her. <laughs> well, her. out of all of us, you might be the safest. <laughs> Truly? Oh, no. Yeah. It's been a light. Everybody have a fantastic evening morning you whatever too. time it is at this point <laughs> wherever you are wherever you are and uh we'll see you next uh next week we're gonna have a little decompression here um after this <laughs> to make sure <laughs> i suggest you also uh you know turn the lights on and uh grab a cup of water hydrate before you go to bed <laughs> so have a fantastic evening we'll see you all next week Bye. Bye.